I'm Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. Hezzy! Yos. How you feel? I feel great. Daddy Hezzy, man. Let's go. You a freaking father, man. Let's go. Nothing I wanted more than Andrew to have a child, but more importantly, a girl. I prayed for it. I prayed for the day that you get a girl and turn straight pussy. It's over. All right? It is over. It's now. over. It is over. I as soon as you start over. come out the womb, That's it. every bit of toxic masculinity, machismo, gone. alpha, gone. everything gone. I'm a feminist now. Yo, I'm not. I am a feminist, but I'm also like. I don't know. I'm a lot of different You're things. You're feminist, right yeah. But I'm. But in a weird way, like I don't think women should work. Because I'm a feminist. I'm with you on that. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense to me. I think that... Um, After you give birth, like, everything, work is beneath you. That's her role. <laughs> it's. It, well, yeah, yeah. I, I know role sounds like a strong word. It does sound like it. Now you're going a little far. No. I, now, now you're going a little far. Wow. You hey, see? It hasn't crazy. been a week. I know. It's not wow. a little toxic. I know. It's yeah. been crazy. It's yeah. a little toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, there's women in the room. Why don't we ask them how they feel? Why? Well, we, can't, we can't silence these women. <laughs> anyway, so uh, l- l- listen. I just, I just want to be mindful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a difference. You know what I mean? It is, the listen, it yeah, is yeah, a yeah, difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is a difference. What's the difference? What, what huh? do you mean? What's the what's difference? difference? What's what are you what's talking about? Oh, you got yourself a mic, so you don't have to do that shit every single time with Chris. Well, I don't well, know. well, we, is this well working? it's okay to yeah, say. Do you do you hear? Our Taylor mic? doesn't have kids yet. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yes, yes. But yet, word yet. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Well, we don't got to get into it. Now, but, but when you have kids, would you want to work? What I'm saying is once a woman gives birth, it's beneath her to go back to work. There's a bit more important job. Not even a more important job. Like, what are you really going to do? It's like, come on, this is... Wait, th- what are you going to do that's more important than that? Yeah. That's all. That's it. Beneath Making women. her own money. If No, if it's your passion and you want to go live your passion, that's yeah. fine. But if you don't like it and you can afford not to, it's beneath you to go back to work. That's right. Once you have a child. I, it's the crazy... Seeing a woman give birth is the craziest thing. Unreal. Did you cry? I cried when I heard the baby. Wow. Because she had a C-section. Wow. It was 24-hour labor. Wow. It was insane. 24 hours? 24 hours in labor. It was unbelievable. Yikes. You never see anything like this. You never see... I mean, Did you stay just, off your phone? I'm not talking about, like, recording, just in general, like, texting, Instagram. I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, genuinely yeah, do yeah, not yeah, even remember. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. remember that... Like, it's not, and it's also, you know this, it's not 24 hours you just chilling there. It's like every few minutes you have a contraction, yes, and excruci- it's the worst yes. fucking period you've they ever had. They can't drug her either, though, right? She well, was no, drugged. No, she, oh, she no, she, initially she wasn't. Really? She eventually got drugs the next day because she was like, yo, this shit is too crazy, and she had to go on this thing called Pitocin to induce the contractions. It was yeah, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, they didn't really want to do the, she didn't want to do a C-section at all. She wanted to do completely natural, vaginal, no drugs, nothing. And um, why, why does she? Well, that's probably too much information. That shit, that shit snatched. It's too. What you mean? This guy's crazy. It's too tight, bro. Get you the fuck out of here for real. <laughs> it's too tight. That's really? what the doctor yeah, said. Shut that's God. what the doctor said. You know what I mean? <laughs> I thought it was just me, but it turns out it's <laughs> yeah. her. You know what I mean? It's too tight. It's too tight. Yeah, they. You know what I mean? They told my wife she tight. couldn't do vaginal anymore after our second, but that's why you hired. Yeah, me. But no, no, that's why you hire a doula. You know what I mean? Because you still want to tap it up. Because you still want to tap it up. Charlotte just looked like a white guy trying to give death to a black guy. What do I do with my hands? Tight wife gang. Tight Tight wife gang. But no, that's why you hire a TWG in the motherfucking building. You hire a doula. Tight wife gang. TWG. Tight wife gang. You know what I mean? Well, that's why you hire a doula. The doula uh, navigated us through that. Cause my we wife... had a doula. We had a. Oh, you had the doula and all that word. We had all dope, these dope, things. Dope, dope. But this shit was too snatched. Yeah, that's really what the doctor said? I never heard that doctor, before in my life. Literally, the doctor was like, I ain't never seen nothing like that. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Damn. And the doctor was Asian, so you know it's true. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> Yo, you know it's true if the Asian doctor was like, I ain't never seen nothing. He's like, I done split something open before. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! Congratulations, man. It's crazy. Congratulations, man. Asian ass doctor, bro. I, I just want to see the change that this woman has on you, this young girl. <laughs> what do you mean? I just can't wait to see. 
It's impossible to be different. You're different the immediately. Moment. I'll be honest though, and I, I was telling them that like the immediate connection is not with the kid. Like it doesn't happen like instantly. Not for the father. For the father. For the no. the mother knows the baby for ten months. That's the right. baby's inside, That's right? right? But for the dad, you get handed this like alien, <laughs> and you every movie you see is like in that moment my whole life changed. It's like that's cap. It does not change in that moment. It starts to seep in and slowly just kind of takes over. And within like the first like hour or two, this like weird paternal instinct just took over. That's right. Like I was telling the guys, like I literally, I could accuse the doctor of being a fake doctor to steal my kid. <laughs> <laughs> so you stood, you stood outside the, uh, what's that shit called, Chris? Not no, the maternity after ward? The after the surgery, I'm in the room with Emma who's recovering. Yes. She's breastfeeding. And then when they try to take the baby away to go. A doctor with a different color yeah, doctor. You gotta outfit. follow him. I didn't follow him. I said, who are you? <laughs> I'm like, I'm from pediatrics. I go, I need to see some ID. And then I went and got the nurse. I was like, you know this bitch? Does this bitch That's work right. here or not? That's right. That's right. Then you follow him and you stand by that fucking shit oh, all I day. The whole time. You're looking at all the babies to make sure it's no mix-ups. Not none. You know what I none. mean? None. That's mine right there. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Exactly. And by Daddy. the way, the best Daddy gang. is yet Tight white to gang. Come. Daddy gang. Listen, the best is <laughs> yet to come. <laughs> you haven't even experienced Tight the best whites, emotions. <laughs> We got tight vibes, bro. Damn, he got you. Come son. on, man. He got you. Son. Come on, we out here. <laughs> hey, we out here. This guy's crazy. Why am I crazy? Mine was different. My C-section wasn't because of that. It was because the baby came a, like a month early. So it was like an emergency something. So I forgot what the name of it is called. But It's called emergency TWG. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. Emergency TWG, my boy. You haven't even experienced the best stuff yet, though. You, I mean, it's so much to experience. That first smile, oh, you know what I mean? It's the best. Then when they get older, it can crawl to you. Oh, man. Yeah, right now, they still don't recognize us, really. It's in that stage where, like, they're just reacting to the world. But I don't even know if they're reacting to the world. They're just having, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they just got here. I think they recognize mom, though. I think they recognize dad, too. It, That's a, it's not voices. what you know. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You deserve that one. You kind of deserve that one. Yo. Why? Because they recognize voices? No, you're right. They're, you're absolutely right. And they even recognize it from the, <laughs> the womb. <laughs> I what? feel like there's a con I don't know. I feel like there's a connection when I met, like, my goddaughter. How old was your they goddaughter? Might, they might well, actually. Now she's fucking 16. But I'm saying, like, when she was born, I was with my best friend. The entire pregnancy. So they, like, she absolutely heard your voice in the pregnancy, right. and she absolutely is familiar with it. She's taller than you now, right? Absolutely. Yeah. She's, her parents are tall as shit. It's beautiful, man. It's awesome. I'm telling you, you have your, the best is yet to come. You have no freaking idea. Did you take off when you had uh, any of your daughters? Well, I had gotten fired. Uh, my, my, my oldest was born June 2008. I got fired November 2008, and that actually was the best thing ever because mm -hmm. I was the person at home. I was the stay at home. I was feeding the bottles. You good at burping? The diapers, burping, What's all that stuff. What's your burp technique? Shoot, I don't even remember. Now nah, I just did what they used to do in the movies, or what I saw everybody else just do. Just hold her and pat her. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? They give you a human being, don't give you a notebook or nothing. Nothing. No, like, they, nothing. It's, 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 it's like criminal. Nothing. Almost. The easiest thing is when you put them on their stomach, and I, I could be wrong, but you put them on their stomach and you just pat them. Yeah, up. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I heard that's not good to do, but you know, fathers, we get lazy, bro. I don't know why men can carry so many things, but carrying a baby gets that heavy shit, quick, yo. bro. He's not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Carrying a baby gets heavy quick. There's an you know emotional I mean? weight. Y'all don't know Man. what it's like to be a dad. Y'all don't know what it's like Yo. out here for us. You know what I mean? Y'all are ridiculous. Why, Why are we ridiculous? We're proud fathers. Can we not be proud fathers on this podcast? <laughs> Absolutely. And it gets better, man, because I'm telling you I, I, I got four, so it's like I got different age ranges. And I actually overheard the eight-year-old and the five-year-old. I'm in the kitchen. I'm literally sitting there eating. Yeah. Right? They're talking to my wife about something, and my wife goes, don't, don't do the pout face. The pout face don't work on me. So my youngest daughter, five-year-old, she turns to the eight-year-old and goes, yeah, the pout face don't work on mommy. It only works on daddy. And I'm sitting there like, wow. what the fuck? I'm sitting right here. It's like, it's like I'm going to call the play, and they can't do anything to stop it, right? So I call her over, and I go, show me the pout face immediately. Did Hello. it work? I hope it's not like that. She didn't even ask me for nothing, and I wanted to give her something. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, but the fact that they know, uh, eight and five, they already know, ah, oh, please, push over. Got it, is, it is crazy. Like, there's something biological that takes over where you're just looking at this thing, and, and I don't think, 
I'm trying to, like, it has to be because, this is gonna sound like the most obvious sentence in the world, who gives a fuck? But it has to be because it's your baby, but it also applies to your parents. So like, my parents and my wife's parents look at the baby and they're having these same reactions. Whereas other people that don't know me or they may maybe know me, they're still like, oh my God, I'm so happy for you, this is awesome. But I don't think they're having this reaction where like, oh my God, I can't believe. So there's something biological that is just passed yeah, down. Yeah, like yeah, seeing yeah. my mom weep when she saw the baby. She's a grandmother. That's the first time, right? Yeah, yeah. She never yeah. thought she'd be a grandma. Really? Aww. Never thought. She even said it. She's like, I never thought this moment would happen. It makes I was you. Like, God damn. I know she have no faith. Yeah, you know I mean? your boy shoot y'all. I'm out here shooting. <laughs> you thought you was gay? Married? Say again. You when you got married? Yeah, my. Say well, who you thought you was gay? <laughs> Not gay, son. <laughs> like, that's kind of yo, that's kind of like the biggest sure. gay flex ever, yo. <laughs> your parents don't think you gonna have kids. Why? What reason would they have to think that they boy wouldn't have kids other than you're gay? Damn. They know you <laughs> my are. parents think I, well, it's their fault for raising me a fucking dance studio. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go get a fucking real job. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. It makes you appreciate your parents more, too, though. Not yet. <laughs> no, it will. No, it will. No, it will. It will. Because, because, because you realize, like, you were like, damn, my parents did all of this for me. Bro, it is. Like, I already appreciate my dad so much, but it's even making him appreciate. I appreciate him even more because my mom went back to work. My dad was able to take off. It wasn't like paid leave, but he was working at NBC. He was like producing the news back in the day. Yeah. So he was able to take off X amount of months, unpaid leave. That was back in the paternity leave. Wasn't even a thing. Doesn't even exist, but you could take off. And so my dad raised me for the first few months. My mom had to go back to work. Or And... So I'm like, how the fuck did this guy know how to do these things? Like, I feel like women, like, exchange this type of information. It's almost, like, culturally part of you guys. Like, oh, this is how you burp. This is how you swaddle. This is how you hold a kid. Like, women already know these things. That's how you into. swallow. Swaddle, bro. No, Yo. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, I don't you need to get some pussy, bro. <laughs> like, Jesus you need Christ. some TWG, bro, for real. Like, you need a TWG, bro. You got to stop playing around, bro. It is Valentine's Day, though. You going to get some? No, 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 no. What's the your gift? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you not going to get some on Valentine's? I don't want, like, that's corny. <laughs> Pussy on Valentine's, yo? What, but what if they want some dangling on Valentine's? They don't. That's like just some traditional shit or some shit that people think they're supposed to do. <sighs> so much fun being black on Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. you a pussy. You're it not is. getting none either. <laughs> Don't you think you plus your dick like I got you a chocolate Easter bunny? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yo, think about how much fun the pranks you could do on Valentine's. You're not getting none. What? You're not getting none. Yeah, you, you gotta wait six weeks, baby. Is it only six? My yeah, wife done told me it was like 16. I knew she was lying. No. <laughs> <laughs> she want to feel that tight as long as possible. That she still got it because she got the we got the C section. It, that's not intimidating for you though. What? I'm not putting my dick in the C-section hole. I'm putting it in the vagina. <laughs> try the fuck new. you talking try about? Try something new. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Ew. This guy is an absolute crazy human being. Try something Yo. new, man. Try something new. That's oh, disgusting. Yo. How do you know it's disgusting? Nobody's ever done it. Does it change your... Does it, I mean, this is maybe too much to ask, but like when you have a vaginal birth, does it change the vagina? Nah, not really? at all. No, no, no. It makes you appreciate everything even more, yo. I because mean, because so it's like such a magic canal. It's like a... So, women are incredible. To be, it, it's unbelievable. Wow. Women are incredible. Wow. Sorry, no, I, wow. Yeah, yeah. They're going to kick you out the manosphere, yo. I'm just telling you. <laughs> they're not going to never I, let you... I done not kick myself You're out. never going viral on the manosphere they, ever they, again. They are incredible, bro. They're just incredible. It's Now, if they don't have kids, whatever. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah. if you, you don't have kids, no, nah, if you don't have kids, you you're a guy. You're just a guy who can't get her fucking cannot. luggage down from the overhead. Oh, shit. <laughs> he said, if you don't have Andrew. kids, you're just a guy you with a vagina. That's that. crazy. You no, cannot no. say that. That's Why? so disrespectful. What do you mean? Because there's a lot yes. of reasons women can't have kids. Yes. There's women that, who just can't have them, you know? You could adopt. You could adopt. As you could adopt. Yeah, you could adopt. Yeah, yeah. You want kids, Taylor? Um, I want a family, but I'm not going to... I don't want a kid just... So what, you want dogs? I'm, no, I'm saying, like, <sighs> I don't have a passion to have kids like that. Like, I want the whole thing then. You know what women without kids are? You ever see, like, a seven-foot black dude working at Whole Foods? Oh, shit. 
God damn. Jesus <laughs> and you looking my at God. that? You look at you, you <laughs> looking at that dude? You that he's, he's putting the three wishes cereal back in the aisle. Holy you're shit, like, man! You know what you could have been. Yeah. I've never seen somebody choose violence like this. This is like, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and we live in a country that has two mass yeah. shootings a year. Wait, wait, I mean, a week, a day. Why am I choosing violence, bro? Jesus Christ! Now, you know how hard it was for us to get exactly. pregnant, bro. So you should have some more sympathy. I have all the sympathy in the world. I'm talking about there are women who don't want to have kids. I'm not talking about the ones who do. It was so hard for us to get pregnant. It was heartbreaking. I couldn't breathe. For oh, you talking about for the ones who don't want to have? I, I hear women all the time yeah, going yeah, like, yeah, "I yeah. don't want to have kids. I don't even want to do it. I don't want kids." And it's just like. You seven foot <laughs> with handle. <laughs> I'm looking at Victor Webbignanas. Okay, I like it. Not, you Victor yeah, Webbignanas. Not like how you work. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, work yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how you work it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm like, I know how to do things now. Okay. At first, it just sounded like you was just shitting on women no, who can't have I'm kids. You Victor yeah, yeah. Webbignanas. For women who can but have you, them and don't want them, it's crazy. You like that's Why? a waste. To, I get what you. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, but. Bombed. Kids are a lot of sacrifice. From the free throw line. Kids are a and lot of sacrifice. Don't have to sacrifice. That is not true. That's why I'm saying all these That, that is not are. true. And that no, is, no, that, is, that, that, is that, that not We don't true? sacrifice that. No, we do. We do. How? That, not like we're them, fathers. Bro. Why don't? Why aren't fathers? Are y'all carrying the kids? Thank you. Are we carrying them? What you Thank mean? Thank you. You know how much he sacrificed with dieting and everything else, being pregnant? Yes, but once the kid get here, oh, get here no. daddy is right there. You're missing, you missing it. You missing, you missing that. I'm no, not. No, I'm just no, not paying no, 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 attention. No, 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 I'm not. You miss it. I'm not. I'm not. Taylor just dunked I'm on her. I'm not. Son. She threw you a alley to dunk on her. She goes, of all the things that are hard about pregnancy, she goes, you know how much you sacrifice during pregnancy with diet? I don't know anything about a diet with pregnancy. <laughs> well, I said she, that. The things stop in her. I, I shouldn't have said no. <laughs> Could you stop? Could you stop? <laughs> oh, they got a truce or some shit like that again. It must be. Y'all got a truce. <laughs> you got no, a truce. I just don't this, this is a sensitive me. subject it's, for it's women. This is a sensitive subject. So chill very, out. It's tender for how women. How you gonna tell me to chill out? I you know did. how difficult it was exactly, for us. Exactly, so you should have more sympathy. But you didn't just shit on all fathers, though. You shit on like, all fathers. fathers. Don't do shit. All you don't know what we go through. What do y'all go through? You know exactly what, what I went through. through. I was know. the one. I was Let the reason why we couldn't get pregnant. Let me know <laughs> when the, when she's finally pregnant. What'd you go through? No, I got, now that's a very unique experience. Yeah. Because Andrew is the guy who thought it, he couldn't get a woman pregnant. So that must make you feel fucked up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh no, yes. Okay, but I'm saying, what did Can you, you apologize sacrifice? at least? No, because what did you sacrifice? And and what did you remember sacrifice? that joke you made? My dignity. Remember that joke you That's made? Not dignity. Remember that joke you made I months sure ago? Do. You oh, should yeah. feel bad about that. I don't. <laughs> I know you, you don't. Feel bad so, about that. Now, I know you don't. I don't. <laughs> I know you don't. But you know what I know? I'm so happy for Daddy's you. Daddy's home. <laughs> 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 Daddy's home. <laughs> What's the next line of that Usher shit? I don't know the matter. No, Daddy's no. home, man. You know what right. I mean? Daddy's home, though. Yeah. But fathers have a very important role, Taylor. Don't shit on our role. They do I'm have not an I'm you have a daddy. You. I'm literally asking you, what did you guys sacrifice? You guys still didn't answer the question. Yo, what Taylor's friend mean? got a crush on you, by the way. I don't care. Harry knows. It is I'm great. a married man, very faithful. That's fire, but How you know you met her or something? Say what? No, you met her? I was on the phone with her, and she's like, Tell him I said, happy Valentine's Day, baby. <laughs> Yo, she be hating you on are. you. She, she don't even never tell me this no more. She used to tell me. Now she don't even tell me no more. Well, tell he, me, ma'am. He was a gay guy, no, though. She's respecting your wife. <laughs> yeah, she is respecting your wife, bro. <laughs> I want to know I'm still alive. <laughs> the old man want to know he still got it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? How old is she? It's a guy. Man, shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> and she got the TWG? Is she... T is she... Yeah, she tucked it. She what? tucked it. <laughs> she trans? What's going on, yo? Yeah, what the fuck is happening, man? What the man? fuck? Yo, can tell me. You ain't never told me no gay Drunk. friend of yours had a it's crush too hot on in me. here, yo. Turn the heat <laughs> off. Please send a message. You never said that to me. Is this flame in the room? Stop it. There's <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Umar, yo. Dr. Dr. Umar, <laughs> salute to the GOAT. Nah, man, I'm happy for you, man. I really, really am, man. Nah, in all seriousness, thank you guys very much. And uh, it's awesome. It's just incredible. It's, I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. You just you have no idea yeah. how much your life is about to change. You have no idea how it is just raising young girls. And I, I feel like that's the ultimate gift. I really do. I feel like as a man, it says a lot about you when God blesses you with with, with girls because mm. it says how to me it's like this is how God feels about you. I trust you with this 
divine Creation. feminine energy. That's I really feel that way. I really feel God that way. God trust us, yo. <laughs> Men that have girls, <laughs> incredible human beings. You know, and they're always usually the, the guys who were probably the worst. You know what I mean? Mm. Or who people thought was the worst. But actually, we're probably the best two women. No, you got it right the first time. You got it right the first time. You gotta speak on that shit. Y'all be worried about haters. Y'all be worried about rhetoric and shit like that. Fuck rhetoric. You said what? You don't want a son at all. I don't have no choice. I'm good. I'm done. We done with four. Yeah, but you wanted that fourth one. No, of course you probably wanted to have. You want a son. Yeah, but it all it all boils down to what did God give you that you actually need. Your wants don't even. Matter, you, you know what I'm saying? Kid. Exactly. I had, yes, kid. Like, you I had a, a moment with my wife. Damn, you let one rip. The gas ain't changed since being a father, huh? Did you hear that? <laughs> Yo, my, smell it. That's my daughter crazy. farts like me. She rips. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to fart when she's feeding. I'm pretty she don't have your gas. She does already. We no, know it already. No, 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 100. percent We know it already. No, <laughs> she's feeding and she's a. Bang. She's nah, just, man, no. Bang. That a woman, bang. a woman. <laughs> your daughter farting like you? Nah, she can't. Nah, she does. No, man, just like me. No, no, no. No. No, she, that's how she farts. It's loud and in charge. And don't stop sucking titty while she does it. Yo, Unaffected. You do that too? <laughs> Have you ever done that? You ever farted while sucking a titty? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Andrew fought so crazy, I think he you needs like a diaper. It? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really do. I think that y'all need to have adult diapers in the house as well. <laughs> this is insane. Does it make you want to move? Move like where? Out of New York. No, but I do see like uh, we have some. We have a baby nurse, someone who's helping us, okay. right? Which is like incredibly helpful. Yes, it's amazing, like it, lifesaver. They know all the things about babies. They know they can teach you how to do every little thing. Like you know, my my mom obviously has to take care of my dad, who's got dementia, and mm -hmm. you know, Emma's family is on the West Coast, and uh, and also Emma's mom is, needs to be taken care of. So like they couldn't just step in like a lot of families do. Where, where, where? So, but we have this baby nurse, and she's incredible. She knows everything, and it just takes. It alleviates that anxiety that you're gonna do something that's gonna kill your own kid, because that's the the only thing I was thinking about the second they handed us the kid. And I was like, well, what if she chokes while she's uh, well, while I'm sleeping and she's on her back? Like, it, it, so I wouldn't sleep and I just stare at her for like two days. I would just stare at this. I kid. love it. But eventually, you got to get some sleep. So just having the baby nurse to be like, it's okay. They know how to spit up, even if they're on their back. Like, I don't know. The best advice I can give you is spend as much time with her as possible yeah. early. Yeah. Because you want that bond. You want to have that yeah. bond. Because before you know it, she'll be five. You know what I mean? It's crazy. And it's like if you don't have that bond, like reestablishing or, or trying to establish a bond after they get to a certain age, it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. So just spend as much time with her as possible, man. That's what I'm trying to do. Like even organizing the schedule. Like I want to be home every single day by six o'clock. Dope. So we have dinner together. Dope. Every single day. Like, my parents were able to do that with me. My mom worked at night. My dad worked during the day. But at 6, we all, or 5.30, we're all having dinner. Dope. For, like, an hour. Dope. And it's crazy. Like, that one hour probably changed my life. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. So just being there for that, that'd be cool. All right, well, let's run through these topics then. Yeah, let's do it. It's getting too close to that time. Uh, Taylor Swift. What does that shit say, Taylor? What is yeah, we need some AC. Game? We need some AC in here, guys. All memes necessary. Here's the thing I don't like about the Taylor Swift situation. I don't like that she's getting all of this credit for making the Super Bowl yeah. ratings go through the roof. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why can we not give this girl any credit? Not all of it, um, bro. Usher not, like, not all of it. It ain't even just Yo, Usher, though. It's the Can fact I tell that... you all something uh -huh. real quick? I'm sorry to interrupt, and I told this at, on Al, to Al during Flagrant. Like, Usher's performance made me believe that racism exists. Talk to me. I went on Twitter and I was like, unbelievable. I go, Usher, unbelievable king or something like that. Mad replies go, yo, that was trash. This was the worst. And I'm like. I think it's racism, though. That's the only, the only way you could look at that performance and <laughs> be critical of it is if you hated black people. I'm with you. That, what, uh, I am, read, I, am I wrong here? I, I read one of the reviews in one of the major publications. I think it was Deadline. I thought that was the most bullshit review What'd they I say? ever read. It sounded like the only reason that he wrote the review that way is because Taylor Swift was at the Super Bowl and he wanted a Taylor Swift halftime performance. Like, literally, if you read it, because nothing he said made sense. Yeah, that was the Usher Fizzles and Super Bowl no. halftime show. No. Despite Alicia Keys and guest stars galore. I'm like, did, who, what's his name? Dominique, is it what's
Dominique, Dominique Patton. Some, I'm not gonna say he's racist, but this was just it was just a ridiculous review, and it was early. Like he wrote this shit like hours after the performance. I watched this performance, and the first thing I said to myself, because I was on the plane coming back from California, and I was like, but that might have been the greatest halftime <coughs> performance I've ever can seen I, in my life. Can I tell you? And I, obviously, I'm fucking being hyperbolic with the racism. I don't know if the guy's racist, but like, it it was so undeniably brilliant. Now here's the thing: my wife, right? Younger than me, she was curious as to why Usher was even selected. She's like, "Why what? is Usher just just take? Let me take you down this journey." She's like, "Why is Usher even selected?" I don't know. It's like, do people really like his music like that? I'm like, I'm like, this might be a generational thing. Like, he's he's the man, and he's incredible at performing. She's like, "Really? Do people like his stuff like that?" So she goes she into it. To him, really. But here's the thing: she goes into it skeptical, doesn't really listen to that much Usher, and is like, "I don't know why he's even doing the halftime show." At the end of the halftime show, she turns to me, she goes, that was the greatest halftime performance <laughs> yes. I've ever seen in my life. How many songs did she realize she knew? And she's singing along. That's right, that's right, that's right. And some of them he left off the table. Yeah. Bro, do you know what one she was singing? <laughs> Daddy's <laughs> home. <laughs> and look at the first line of this review. With Taylor Swift and the 65,000 strong crowd at Sunday's Super Bowl in Vegas, Usher couldn't have had any illusions about who had the greatest star power. What the fuck that got to do with anything? And the media's attention as he... Son, this is people what? want a hot take. Y'all want some attention for your yeah. goofy-ass little article so you're going to hate on something great. That's all motherfuckers do. It made no just sense. hate on greatness. It, the guy actually sang. And if he didn't La sing, yes. you know what they would have said? He lip-synced the whole fucking that's time. That's right, that's right. He actually he danced He fucking his... skated. He came out on the Stop skates. It. Stop it. He bought the stripper poles. Stop he it. He sang without TV tracks. Can, Stop it. Can I tell y'all, though, what people that may not like it... Because this piece off what Jess was saying. Um, it was a party theme, clearly, but I think people like the structured look. Like, think about Rihanna's structured look, Beyonce's structured it look. Was it was structured. No, but, like, everyone kind of was doing yeah. their own this thing. This guy had a carnival. This guy well, had the fucking I'm, guys doing backflips yeah, in the but air. You have, but people like... <clears throat> The structure that you can move along with. That's it not better. Usher. You can't even compare Rihanna I'm to not, Usher. Because no, no, Rihanna's I'm not, not even the type of showman or show woman that Usher is. This Usher is, is all, a showman. This is what the reviews I heard from several people, though. They're ridiculous. And it, 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 it lets me know we don't know what entertainment is anymore. We're so Why? used to basic shit, and we don't even know what greatness looks like. This anymore. is no offense to Rihanna, but like you can't even compare. It's not even like, close. I, I, I have it's a lot of respect for Rihanna. Her music is amazing. You listen to it, it's awesome. No. But you cannot compare Rihanna to at us. all. But we're not in terms of a it, performance. I'm telling you what people like to see. That's all I'm saying. Like with the dancers. I'm That's telling you, greatest halftime. Oh, you, know, you know how you know she's wrong? Because all the greatest <laughs> halftime shows had mad dancers. No, we're not. Go back and watch Charlie, Michael Jackson's performance. Go back and watch Beyonce in 2013. You get what I'm trying to say? 13. No, but, but you're wrong. I'm just saying, I'm not saying it's <laughs> me. I'm literally not saying I feel this way. I'm literally saying from what I've discussed with other people, they Yo, said Yo, those other people suck. Your friends silly. suck. You talking silly. about Jess Hilarious? Jess, I, I didn't just, just say that just for the yes, show. Did. Jess, Jess no, opinion on this sucks. She liked it, but she said she preferred... Uh, Rihanna, because she liked the structure of how it looked like the dancers looked. Man, get out of here, along. Jess. You lying to Listen, yourself. Five, top five greatest yeah. halftime performances I've ever seen in no particular order. Michael Jackson, uh, the first Beyonce one, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, Prince, and goddamn Usher. And it's hard to say Usher wasn't the best one I've ever Bro, seen. Bro, it was... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Beyonce unbelievable. Had Beyonce had two. Oh, sure. The first one she did when she came out with Destiny's Child, when she jumped out of the stage, she killed that shit. And see, I went back and watched a lot of them, right? Prince... You're about Katy Perry, too. Katy Perry was cool. I like Katy Perry. But Prince was so dope, but he didn't have any... He, he don't dance. Mm. What set Prince's performance over the top... Musicality. He started playing yeah. Purple Rain, mm -hmm. and it started raining in Miami, guys. Like, there wasn't no effect. Oh, like, naturally. Naturally effect. started raining. So you're yeah, like, oh, it. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what took me over the top with Prince. Mm -hmm. But production-wise, Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Usher, it's not even close, bro. Michael fucking had Michael Jackson stunt doubles. Remember, you know how they got the big screens in the stadium? Mind you, this is 93 or some shit that like that. That was incredible. Exactly. So think about watching this in 93. <laughs> he, 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 he's standing in the screen. He shoots out. He's standing on top of the big screen in the stadium. They keep, so it's like... They know what you're saying right now? The they, big they screen used in the, the stadium. I saw, I saw 
seen it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. He looks this way, looks that way, then jumps out. Then another one jumps out on the other screen. Then he just pops up on stage. I mean, of course, it's all stunt doubles. But then he pops up on stage. He just stands there for three minutes. Yeah, that, that was fine. He literally just stood there for three minutes. Said, Do did not nothing. start the music until I take my glasses off. Take my off. fucking shades off. Can you imagine doing that as a stand-up? How much time I got? <laughs> you know what I mean? 15 minutes, you go out there and just stand there for three and the crowd's losing their shit? Come on, man. Mm -mm. Usher Raymond IV. Mm. It's the biggest. To me, he had the best halftime show, man. That's his Yo, my personal it opinion. It was his confidence. The, he went up there and it was like he was supposed to be there. There wasn't a bit of imposter syndrome, nothing. You're at looking all. at a guy who's just soaking it all in. It was remarkable. And I couldn't believe that there were people that were already so quick to hate. I randomly saw Usher four times last year, yeah. Randomly. <laughs> I did. Randomly. Because he, he performed the, the <laughs> night he performed the night I did the Roots picnic. I saw him at the iHeartRadio Living Black thing. I feel like I saw him somewhere else. And then I saw I went to his Vegas residency. And it just made me realize he is the greatest showman of our generation. Of our generation. I'm 40. I'm only born in 1978. I'm 45. Mm. There's nobody I think is a better showman who puts on a better stage performance than Usher Raymond the Fourth. The only other person to me that's it's Taylor. Close? Nah. Beyonce. Beyonce. <laughs> Guys, let Taylor don't dance didn't like we, them. Didn't we already settle this? Yeah, but Taylor, <laughs> Taylor, Taylor really Taylor need... dance like them. It did, but she's so good at what she does in the stage I, show is so good and so it choreographed so well that she doesn't even need to dance. Mind you, I've never seen it. So I yeah. can't even see it. And she I, also I, plays yeah, the I'm instruments. Performer. The instruments. If you should say performer, then you gotta give it to How many instruments does she play? Oh, sure, Beyonce. How many instruments? Yeah. Um, I don't know, just guitar? Maybe more. Yeah. Piano, too? Maybe. And the only reason I feel like it's disrespectful that they keep giving Taylor all of this credit is this was a great Super Bowl, y'all. I mean, you had one of the greatest franchises in the history of the NFL, the San Francisco 49ers. They've won five Super Bowls. If they would have won this year, it would have been six. I mean, they're, they're a storied franchise. From Joe Montana to Steve Young, they're fantastic. They're always in the mix. People love the 49ers. You had the Kansas City Chiefs, who are a new goddamn dynasty. You know what I mean? Been to the Super Bowl four out of the last five fucking years. Patrick Mahomes is the biggest star in the NFL. It's not even fucking close. Yep. That right there is going to get you 100 plus million people. Facts. Then you add Usher to the mix. You add the star of Travis Kelsey, his relationship with Taylor Swift. Of course you're going to have a combination that leads to over 200 Plus million people. You know how many? Two hundred plus million people exactly. watch this. Watch the fucking Super Bowl this shit. Uh, that's in, that's insane. Incredible. That's insane. Incredible. I think it was two hundred and four is the actual number. So for everybody just to give the credit to Taylor, that's kind of silly, y'all. I think that's what. I think I'm realizing now. It's like that's what people people don't hate Taylor. I think they resent her fans because her fans will say things like, "Taylor is the reason why the Super Bowl was successful." That's right. Yada yada yada. That being said. Taylor ends up getting residual hate because of the things her fans, some of her fans say, which is completely unfair because the girl is literally just being a good girlfriend. She had four sold out shows in Tokyo, flies herself and her team to go be at her boyfriend's Super Bowl game. Like, it's a great thing to do. She's being a great girlfriend. She's there, she's cheering, she's supporting. If she's not cheering, people are gonna go, look, she's bored. That's if right. she cheers too much, they go, oh, she's faking it. Like, the poor girl can't do anything right. She seems very authentic. I mean, she had ice spice in her suite. You know what I mean? Looking out for the migrants. So it's just like, <laughs> yeah. you know, no, for real. She's from the Bronx. Like, it don't get, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it don't, like that, she didn't have to do that. Like, That's you, facts. I, that right, I guarantee you so many people Googled who the fuck Ice Spice was. Like, she made Ice Spice stock go through the roof just having Ice Spice up there with her and fucking Katy Perry and uh, Blake Lively and Captain Marvel. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, that shit was incredible. Captain Marvel was there? I don't freaking know. I don't, I don't know. I, the only person I know, I know, I know Ice Spice, and I know Blake Lively was there, but I, for some reason, I thought Blake Lively was a guy all this time. Yeah. <laughs> did you really? I did. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think Blake Lively was a guy? Nah. I don't know. What is she? What is she? What is she uh, she's that was actress. Gossip Girl, right? Yeah. Yeah, Gossip, Gossip Girl? Girl? Yeah. yeah. Well, salute to Blake Lively, man. <laughs> that was, and also, too, Beyonce. Beyonce's commercial during the Super Bowl for Verizon that she got paid thirty million dollars to do, but it wasn't just a commercial. Thirty it was million. Thirty fucking million dollars, and it wasn't wow. just a commercial. It was an advertisement for two new songs that she released. So, 
you know, it was a lot going on. Like there was, this was a big, big Super Bowl. It was, I, it was almost like all of these companies and everybody knew this is gonna be a big one. We gotta really, really put out, put on. You know what I mean? The fact that Beyonce, I'm gonna use this moment to put out two new, two new songs. Mm, Come on, man. I heard Beyonce is gonna do the uh, the Sphere in Vegas. I don't believe that. That's the rumor. Yeah, I heard that too. I, it's, it's hard for me to believe. The rumor. You just came off a world tour. Like, why would you go to the Sphere in Vegas? Because you don't gotta move. You just sit there and make crazy money, just hang out in Las Vegas. Can they afford that, though? Who is they? The Spear. The <laughs> Can the right. Spear afford that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. The Spear. Can, whatever the fuck. <laughs> the spear. Can the Spear? Can the shit from Wakanda that they use to kill people afford that? Yeah, huh? they can afford it. I don't know, bro. They can. Because the idea is that you don't have to do any, uh, you're not paying for... You pay for production once, and then it just stays there in that location. Well, how much do you pay for pay Beyonce, though? As much as you want. I mean, there's 18,000 people. It's an arena every single night. Yeah. And you can pay extra because people want to go to the Sphere. I mean, She's I would... not going to do every night, though. Well, she'll do X amount of nights a week, for sure. Yeah, because Usher did. I think Usher was doing Thursday to Saturday. But he didn't do the Sunday. Sphere. No, he wasn't doing the Sphere. He was doing the... Uh, I think it was the MGM Grand Arena. <laughs> I don't see it, bro. I mean, it would be so amazing. I, I, uh, the only why, thing that I would... Why don't you... Yeah. Yeah, why don't you... Because she's still viable. Like, And I'm not saying that Usher wasn't, but she can. she's still out here doing world tours. Yeah, but this is different. The sphere doesn't mean that... This is not like, like a time in it? Vegas where you're done. And Adele, was, Adele. She had a Vegas residency. Oh, she did? Yeah. She oh, was, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't put Adele and Beyonce on the same level, but... I mean, she's doing world tours, arena tours. She's just like... Take I while. guess... They would just, sell out every night. Maybe if it maybe it was for a limited time. If it was like a two, three month residence. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. I can see that. I can't see her doing like a whole year someplace. I mean, yeah, because she did that for she uh she did Atlantic City where she opened up the uh Ocean Casino in Atlantic City mm -hmm. a couple a few years ago when they opened had their grand opening. Maybe. I go I mean of course you go see it, right? I just feel like, yeah, going to Vegas and and, and doing the residency best. it isn't what it used to be. It used to signal the end of your career. Now I feel like people are going there and they're having residencies and it's just an amazing resurgence. Like, look at what the Usher residency did. It's like, now everybody's like, oh my God, I need to see Usher. Look how incredible this show he, is. He got his flowers. Like, yeah. that's, all, that's what it did. Yeah. It made everybody realize how dope Usher was. Like, like that, that little microcosm that you saw at the Super Bowl for 13 minutes, he literally does that for two and a half, damn near three hours. Unbelievable. At his, at his residency. And it's way more incredible than that. Like, and he had little elements of the show. That's why him doing it in Vegas just made all the sense in the world. I don't think there's ever been a more popular residency than, than Usher in Las Vegas. I mean, especially not with the, the type of attention it was getting. That's like, right. It became a meme. Like, who's, <laughs> who's the person that's going to get their wife sung to yeah. at the Usher show? Usher's a wild boy, man. I know. Well, <laughs> he don't never disappoint. Like, we did not think Usher would find a way to do something to somebody's wife at the Super Bowl. He did it, though. He found a goddamn way. But he doesn't, it doesn't feel disrespectful. Well, it's, you, I mean, it's Usher, and you, you, yeah, you, you kind of like, expect it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, what was that old shit back in the day? Remember that old school shit? It was like a... Oh, base god! What did you say to put them kids? You say to base god? Little Boosie, the base god, or whatever. No, it wasn't Little, no, it wasn't little Boosie, the base god. No, there's <laughs> little, Boosie. little B. Little. Who they used to be like base, base god. Fuck my bitch, bro. Oh, so I faintly remember. It was that. something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like that was, was the... it his name, Boosie or no. B? No, it's Little B. Oh, Little, little B. B. Little B, the base god. But it's just like it's kind of like that with Usher. He's missed to steal your girl. It's kind of like a yeah. a, a, a fly Trey. thing. Like yeah, yeah, Trey. yeah that's, Usher, do that's your thing. That's Trey. That's Trey. That's Trey. That's not. He just makes. Oh yeah, what's, who's Usher? He's not Mr. Steal Your Girl. What's, what's Usher? Don't leave your girl around me, yeah. Mr. Don't leave your girl around me. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Playing for real. So it's just kind of like cool, like yeah, Usher, do your thing. You know, and they got a song called My Boo, yo. They're performing, guys. And with all due respect, Alicia still got it. Yo, she's beautiful. <laughs> with all due respect. <laughs> now you better say that because I'm telling you, Swiss ain't playing with you. Listen. You, you, that'll be beak to beak. Y'all will be beak to beak somewhere. <laughs> 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 okay. You don't want them problems. <laughs> I, don't want twist. I don't want these problems, Twist. This is with all due respect. I just want to say Usher beautiful. I just responded, though. Yeah. I just said I came That's to put on a show. <laughs> beak to beak. You feel me? Usher is no joke. Uh, Listen, he's the greatest showman, show person of our generation. To me, I, it's him and Beyonce. I'm just talking about as far as being on stage, performing. I give, I'll put Chris Brown in the mix, too. Yeah, what is this? Isn't that am, funny? Am I the only person that chuckled at this part? Why is it? 
He, Why like, is he like runs off. It's so funny how he runs off, yo. That's smart. He only got 15 minutes. No, but dude, look, he's looking at hand action. Damn, why is it stopped? It's all oh. good, T. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. dope, though. Yeah. Every little detail. It's so yeah. sassy. He didn't, know, he didn't just walk <laughs> off. He danced off, man. Shout out to the fucking goat, man. Usher Raymond the so fourth. Even when he's in the background, you focus on him. Yeah, that's right. star power. He is a superstar. Yeah, nah, he this did generation it, doesn't even know what superstars are anymore. I was it is reading true. something the other day. Somebody posted about how they were talking to an AR and they were saying, Do you think we'll ever have traditional superstars? Because it was after the Super Bowl performance. Will, you, will we ever have any more superstars on this level? And the guy said, The AR said, No. The way the game is right now, the accessibility to celebrities, no. There is no more ushers. There's no more Taylor Swifts. There's no more Beyonce's. It's not happening. Who? What's the, the What's the last think, superstar we've had in the I last Do five years? I think Doja Cat is a superstar. Genuinely. Yeah, but she's, you're talking not about like people that don't respond. You're not going to get no reaction. No, it ain't that. I, don't, I think Doja Cat is a star. I don't think she's a superstar yet. It's a difference. Mm. It's different. Superstars. Superstars. There's stars but and there's superstars. She can do it all. Listen, I, I, I'm, I'm fucking some 40-year-old dude. I'm not even listening to Doja Cat like that, but she can do it. You said you're doing what? I'm not even listening to Doja Cat like that. I'm no, a 40-year-old dude. <laughs> Y'all heard what I heard? <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard he's a 40-year-old dude. He's not listening no, to Doja Cat. Like, that's what I heard, too. I'm like... <laughs> I got gay ears, so maybe I just. <laughs> word up. I'm like, what? I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Okay. <laughs> I am fucking 40 year old dudes. <laughs> what? What? That's it. what do you I don't know what he's What do you guys say, keep bro? hearing? Dude? I don't know, bro. <laughs> no. Jesus Christ. Um, no, no. I'm a 40-year-old guy. What the fuck do I know about Doja Cat? But she has all the skills. Like, she can rap. She can sing. She can dance. She's just so charismatic. She's funny. All of that used to make superstars. And now? I just don't think they do anymore just because the way the game is. Everybody, first of all, everybody thinks they're a star. What about Cardi? I think Cardi's a star. I think she's a I think she's a huge star. What would make her a superstar? Less accessibility. People having less access to her. Uh, an air an air of mystery. Ah, uh, that's what no longer exists. An air yeah, of that's, mystery. That's not a question. I, yeah, I don't I don't think that that's there anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I think the the last generation of superstars was a decade ago. I think I personally I think Kendrick I think Kendrick is a superstar. Wow, it's so interesting. I think Kendrick is I a superstar. You, you just are valuing mystery. I think Drake, I think Drake, I think Drake is a superstar. Yeah, there's no question. who acts like a Twitter nigga. <laughs> you know uh, what I'm saying? I think he's a superstar who acts like the regular everyday Twitter influencer. Mm. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Mm. You're I don't saying know. That it it diminishes his star power being so relatable and accessible. He's got a star power though. I don't know if it's relatable. He's a superstar. That guy's the biggest. No, no, he's he's, he's a superstar. Musician. I don't know if it's a re, I don't know it's if it's a relatability as much as it is. People, I don't. Everybody can't think they can be you. Yeah, you want some mystery. You want them to be uh, aspirational. You don't want them to be just like you. Yeah. What about actors and actresses? There was a time where Johnny Depp <coughs> was yeah, a superstar. Is Zendaya a superstar? Uh, mm. Zendaya she might be because she's not so actionable like that. Yeah. She's so fucking Yeah, Zendaya might be a superstar. I would say yes, star. Timothy Chalamet. What about The Rock? Probably have to. Rock is a superstar. Yeah. Yeah, not even close. But he's old school. He's not, I don't count him. I'm talking about these new You're people. You're talking about next generation. Yeah, I'm talking this next generation of yeah. actors. Yeah. Right? yeah, Zendaya's right there. Right. Zendaya's a mystery. She's... Yeah. But then, then she's like incredibly relatable. But also the way we look at Hollywood change. You don't look at movie stars like we used to. There's you know what I'm saying? Few. You don't look at TV stars like you used to. Because there's people that's online, social media, YouTube, doing their own sketches, and they're more popular than some of these people that's on television. Like, mm -hmm. Drew, Drewski's more popular than probably every member of SNL, every cast member of SNL. 100%. There's not, like, is there a cast member on SNL that's as popular as Drewski? No. You know what I mean? Drewski's in the commercials, all yeah. of that shit. Like, yeah. there's, there's commentators that are... More popular than, than than correspondence on the Daily Show. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like game it's like like yeah. it's, it's just it's, the game has changed in such a way. Yeah. I just don't know if you can ever have 
a superstar. Is Kanye a superstar? Oh, yeah. But he's grandfathered in. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, different generation. He took advantage of the Super Bowl. How? Like, dropping a commercial that he shot I, yeah, on his iPhone. Yeah, I didn't even see it. I, I, I didn't I, see I, the commercial just, either. I when was that it. out? It was just a quick 30-second commercial. It was just straight but to iPhone. What part of the game? I watched the whole game. I, I think it was around uh, second quarter. Somewhere. I didn't see it. It was somewhere it, early. It worked for him. They said yeah. he had $19 million in sales. Uh, I also saw him in a picture next to uh, the Adidas CEO. Means nothing. I just, I just took a picture with him. Do you know, you know what's sad <laughs> about that picture? The, his cap, <coughs> his caption. Mm, what was it? He was like, I offered him twenty percent. I offered him twenty percent to get back to do something. Like read to get pull, pull up the caption, Taylor. Oh, oh. To, yeah. It's just like yo you, distribute or something. It's like, like yo, yeah. does, do you want to be free or not? Or not? Yeah. Like he he, he got guys like you so food. And no, it's so no, hilarious. No, it's true. No, 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 like, no, do you no, no. want to be free or not? One minute yes. you're celebrating all this freedom and this independence, <laughs> next moment you're offering up 20%. Yup. I'm, like, just, I'm just getting like, at the point that you said he, he's done forever. The independent he's, life they never gonna let him. You, I, I, you I, said I, he's done forever, they're never going to let him back in. That's your words they exactly. Haven't they aren't going to. I mean, they might. It's getting no, closer. No, no. It's no, getting closer. No, they no. bumped into each other at an airport or something like that. Why would he... Sit down and smile, take the a picture. CEO of Adidas has never even said anything bad about Kanye. He actually said some months ago that he didn't think Kanye believed any of the words that were coming out of his mouth. He said that months ago. I, don't I, I heard a good take about Kanye with that. Russ, Talk to me. Russ said it. He or no, not Russ. Uh, Lil Dicky said it. And Lil Dicky was like, I think, I don't think he goes. I don't think Kanye believes those things. I just think someone told Kanye that he can't speak about the Jews or he can't. Uh, have these opinions and his most important axiom in his life is to be able to do whatever he wants. So once you tell him he can't do something, yeah. he's going to do it. And that's the MAGA hat. That's speaking about the Jews. That's yeah. uh, wearing skinny jeans. That's dressing in like a prep school yeah. uh, white boy polo shit. We, we call that dickhead momentum. <laughs> sure. It's like it's like when you see somebody doing something like stop, dickhead. Yeah, you, you stop. Yeah, yeah. But and, and he can't stop himself. He's like, you can't tell me to stop. Now, exactly. I'm not saying it excuses it, right? But it does. It you would hope that that's the reason, not that he looks up to Hitler and wants to get rid of all the Jews. It's a it, but here's the thing, shows it's still a lack of emotional intelligence, like a motherfucker. Yeah, he doesn't you got have a, you got a multi-billion yeah. dollar business that you burnt to the ground for tweets. <laughs> because because somebody told you that you can't say something, why say it? No, it's the like. What was the reason? hundred. Like there was there was no reason to do it. It was just yeah. stupid. Yeah. And then it's like, what was the, oh, what's the tweet, Taylor? What's the tweet? You did all of this just to post with the CEO from Adidas and tweet things like, what did the tweet say? Just met the CEO of Adidas or just bumped, I just bumped the into of the CEO. Yeah, but he had another. Oh, he must have changed it because he had another caption that says something about twenty percent. Oh. I, I forgot. Maybe, click on that one, maybe. No, that's it. I don't, I don't. I don't see if you can find it. But he said something about twenty percent. But my whole thing is like, why burn it to the ground just to be offering them twenty percent two years later, yeah. <laughs> two three years later? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be free or not? Kanye. That's it. No, I agree with you completely. No, yeah. like, I, I agree with you. I'm just saying. Everybody wants. This be looks like he's closer. Yeah. To get back in. No. Everybody wants to be independent until they see what it takes. And then they want a partnership real fucking fast. By the way, guys, Adidas is not gonna burn down their whole company that, to be in business no with Kanye West. There's no Okay. Way. I know that I know that y'all think Kanye West is is the is the end all be all when it comes to Adidas. No, you know what's the end all be all when it comes to Adidas? Yeah, soccer. soccer. Football. Soccer. Uh, football. Football. <laughs> football all around the world. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. They are not. Shitting, look, see, look, I'm willing to give you guys a royalty, 20% of net, net profit. Adidas, I'm willing to give 20% of sales, not ownership, as a non exclusive manufacturing and distribution partner. Kanye, I am almost positive. Is, you could have worked that deal out on your own like, when your contract was up with Adidas. Yeah. Mm. See, people like Kanye teach. You young digital dickheads, how to do things the wrong fucking I'm way. I've seen you. Because yeah, it's the I, truth. I, I, People right. see that shit and they think, you know what, that's how you do oh, they things. they ignore this part. I love war. No, no. What? People ignore this part. Like what he was saying, asking Adidas when he was pulling a Kaepernick. Oh. Like, yes. Yeah, they just ignore it completely because it just doesn't go with the narrative. They, I mean, this is him 
begging Adidas to work with him. Exactly. Because yeah. he realized, like, oh, shit, I'm really fucked up out here. No companies mm. and nobody want to deal with me. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> you he, know what I'm saying? He, he spoke like, about going, he was, like, two months away from being bankrupt or something. Th think about yeah, that. I know, it's crazy. Just think about that, yo. Already? That's what he, <laughs> TMZ oh, had just got him. He said that. Y'all got him. Two months away from being bankrupt. Y'all got to choose better heroes. Um, <laughs> and when you, love your, when you love your heroes, don't love them to the, to the, to the detriment of yourself and, and, and be able to understand when they fucked up. Mm. But you don't think a brand's going to see that he made twenty million dollars in a day and be like, uh, you know what? I might take the chance on him." Alex, no. Do you understand? Come on, I'm just, I, I, I'm just I, saying. I need, I need you know, there's some brands that are just about money. No, there is no brand that is going to ruin their company being in business with him at this moment. Okay, Do you understand great. that ADL and every Jewish organization said this guy caused hate crimes to go up around the world? Mm. What are you? What, what, Not only that, he's just. What like, are we talking about? He's off his rocker. It's like if you're in have a business relationship with somebody, you need to be able to trust that they're gonna execute on the terms of that deal. Yes. And the reality is, he doesn't feel. I don't know. It doesn't seem like he's safe enough or trustworthy enough to do that. He's a liability. Yeah. Mm. Why would you want to be in business with somebody that just might wake up one day and just do not a tweet? That Unless you're like. desperate. If it's a company that's like going out of business and their last dick ditch effort is to give him a piece, then that's going to happen. You said his last dick effort. You be hearing No, nah, bro. <laughs> you catching yourself a lot, bro. You, what the <laughs> fuck is going on, man? What'd you do this weekend, bro? <laughs> Yo, what'd you do this weekend, bro? Amazing things. What'd you do this not weekend? He was, he was in West Hollywood, right? No, nah, I wasn't. No. What'd you do? I did some amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh, yeah. You nope, can't talk about the spiritual no, I, I, I went on a spiritual retreat, yeah. but I don't want to talk about it. You said you were going to talk about when you get back. <laughs> yeah, but when, I, when you saw what I saw. What'd you say? God is white? <laughs> nah. Right, look at me. <laughs> I, I, the crazy part is, but, definitely not. Really? Man, y'all better start treating black people with some respect. I don't. I feel sorry for some of y'all, boy. <laughs> hey, tell me, tell me, tell me. Nope, nope. <laughs> oh, come on. Yo, how you gonna hold nope. that yeah. back, bro? Hey, and you nope. said it last so week. God is black. I will just tell y'all that there are things out here. No, I don't even know. There, I can't even say things out here. There are things beyond these realms that are absolutely positively real. That's what I would tell you. And why do you know that to be true? I just know it. I'll tell y'all one day, just not right now. It's too early, man. It's too fresh. It's fresh. It's fresh. Still taking it in? Taking it I'm seriously, like, really just... Woo! Yeah, man. Yeah. Let's pay some bills, Taylor. <laughs> Let's pay some bills. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because I got to tell y'all about mood, okay? Um, I know that you guys like that THC high. Well, now there is a way to get that federally legal THC high, okay? They're adding their most potent product to the lineup yet, and that is Mood. Mood has got your federally legal THC and is delivering it right to your doorstep, okay? They have hemp-based THC A flower, the future of legal THC. Try it along with all of Mood's other amazing offerings. They got the flower, the gummies, the vapes, and more. And for a limited time, Mood is giving our listeners a free THC A pre-roll and 20% off your first order. All you gotta do is visit hellomood.com and use our code IDIOTS. I am telling you, this is the easiest, most delightful way to get that THC high without the concern of the cops busting in, breaking down your door, pissing off the people on the street, your bosses. This is federally legal. The Fed is coming out and saying, yo, this is how we get high. How crazy is that? All I'm saying right now is you go to Hello Mood, that is H E L L O M O O D dot com. Use the code IDIOTS, you're getting 20% off your order and a free THCA pre roll. You gotta try that new THC flower today for a limited time. Only 20% off your first order and a free THCA pre roll. Just go to Hello Mood dot com, use the promo code IDIOTS. We also got Robin Hood, Charlemagne. Yes, yeah, salute to Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robin Hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. 
No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC is a registered broker-dealer. Let's do it. You want to do some church announcements, Shote? What we got? Um, I mean, the biggest church announcement is, uh, man, I'm a dad. Bang, uh, bang. Uh, that's the most important one. But uh, tour, uh, theandrewshultz.com, the life tour. Now you know why it's called the life tour, obviously. Um, you got some jokes about the... the, the I mean, yeah, the, the hour is really just a story of us trying to get pregnant. It was in, in incredibly difficult and uh, just going through that journey. And um, oh, so you've told you you've been doing this then? Yeah, yeah. I was just very deliberate about how I shared the information. Got you. Got like you, I didn't got even you, say you. we were pregnant till I think Emma was like six months, and we basically were told like that's where the baby can live outside of the womb if if anything goes wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, like that's the story that I've been that I've been working on, and and it's it was a wild experience, man. It's a wild experience. And then to put it, comedy is really the only way that I could deal with it because I just didn't like talking to people about it and, mm -hmm. you know anyway so uh yeah it was just an awesome outlet to have but uh so life tour man uh shows coming up go check them out right now theatersouls.com all those tickets are there right now go check them well i want to salute uh the good sister alice randall alice randall is a professor at vanderbilt um, she has a book coming out uh, on my book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing with Simon & Schuster. It's the next book coming out. It comes out April 9th. It's called My Black Country, A Journey Through Country Music's Black Past, Present, and Future. See, here's the thing, y'all. Beyonce is going to have y'all wearing stirrups and cowboy hats and riding horses and square dancing, but I don't want y'all to just be out here dressed like a cowgirl and not being able to understand why Beyonce is doing what she's doing. I want y'all to understand the history mm. of black people in country music, and that's why you need to go out there and get My Black Country by Alice Randall, a journey through country music's black past, present, and future. Do you know Alice Randall is the first black woman that write a number one record for a country singer. She wrote a song for no Trisha way. Yearwood called XXX's O's, O's, O's. Okay? So she knows what she's talking about in regards to country music, y'all. You're going to love My Black Country. It comes out April 9th, but it's available for pre-order right now. Okay? Right now. All right? Don't let Beyonce down. Okay, Beyonce gonna want to know what y'all know about country music now. Beyonce gonna be doing quizzes and she gonna be doing um, tests and she gonna want to know what you know about black people in country music and she wants you to be able to say more than hootie. All right? <laughs> so you go out there and get My Black Country by Alice Randall right now, available wherever you buy books, okay? Did you hear Beyonce's record, Schultz? I didn't even know that Beyonce had a new record. Yeah, she put out a Super Bowl commercial and she released two records that same same and night. It's a country album. One, well, one of them is a country song. I don't She's, think it's gonna be a whole country album. She's trying to compete with Taylor, huh? All, well, rumor says it's supposed to collapse. There goes Show saying the quiet part out loud again. She's trying to compete with Taylor. Let's just call it what it is. She can't compete with the goat, so she's going after her genre of music to see if she can. What? The They're Taylor's gonna to do her favor and do a song with her. Stop. A little charity work. Stop. Oh no, I I I, I believe that. <laughs> I absolutely, believe Taylor, I absolutely believe Taylor and Beyonce are going to have a song together. Because if you look at the way they're putting out their albums, Beyonce's coming out like March 20-something, and then Taylor's coming out like two weeks later. Like, they're absolutely positively going to have a song together. Hmm. It, would, it would only make sense. Taylor has a new album that's going to come out? Yeah, she announced it at the... Uh, at the, what the fuck was that? The Grammys. Yeah. This woman, yes, she announced it at the Grammys. Greatest. Salute to Killer Mike, too. <laughs> Let's go, Mike. For winning three Grammys, the man. The sweep. He won uh, Best Rap Song, Best Rap Performance, and Best Rap Album of the Year, like I told y'all he was. The sweep. I told y'all he was going to do that. The beauty of what Killer Mike did goes back to what we were talking about when it comes to superstars and shit like that no more. Killer Mike is not on a label, y'all. Mm. Killer Mike spent a half a million dollars of his own money putting together this album. I was, I was in the studio with him listening to music way, way, way back when. The first time I heard the album, I'm like, bro, you're going to win a Grammy. Like, 
He felt the same way. We all felt that when we first heard this, the project. Because if you know the Grammys, man, and you know the history of the Grammys, you look at the kind of rap records that they reward, especially in more recent years. He, oh, Jesus Christ. God. He just had one of those. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he just had one of those. That shit made no sense just now. Like, he, he fucking was acting like he was on a fucking virtual reality <laughs> ride at fucking Universal Studios. Like, <laughs> like crank, I just cranked that soldier boy. You cranked right that now. fucking soldier boy. You cranked those cheeks. God damn. I'm just waiting on the smell to hit. I know that shit. I didn't let that one smell. You ain't let that one smell? No. But shout out to Killer Mike, man. You know what I mean? Spent half a million dollars of his own money and won three Grammys. You know, sales through the roof now because of the Grammys because oh, everybody's God fucking bless. screaming the album and going to see who the hell Killer Mike is. And you're not going to sit here and tell me this was not a goddamn conspiracy, yo. Yo, why did he get arrested? Yeah, who the fuck knows? This is kind of argument with someone. I, I have no idea. If you ask me... I think that they just did not want Killer Mike on the stage delivering some type of message. Because this isn't this is this is the pre-show. This didn't happen during the live broadcast. They didn't broadcast the motherfucking rap categories this year. Mm. Just tell for him, no reason. Tell them what he said in the interview. Oh, well, when I when I gave them Donkey of the Day for arresting Killer Mike, I said, man, how dope would it have been if Killer Mike, if Mike, if Jay-Z during his acceptance speech would have bought out Killer Mike. Because Jay-Z was up there talking about the fact that, you know, they didn't broadcast the Rap Awards in 88, so Jay Fresh Prince and Will Smith, I mean, Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff boycotted. He talked about in 94, or 98, how they boycotted, uh, he boycotted when he won. You smell it? Yes. I did smell it I don't smell it, it Taylor. Yeah, 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 I don't smell it at all. Oh my I God. did so, shoot it in your direction. The fact that they didn't have the awards, <laughs> the fact they didn't have the awards <laughs> this year, Man, you thought you were going to get away with it. The you fact thought you were going to get away without some stank. The fact they didn't air the awards this year uh, just made me real, made me think, like, yo, it's, it's, it's got to be some type of conspiracy. And Jay-Z wanted to bring Mike up. I said that during Donkey of the Day, but then Mike said today that was the plan. Jay-Z was going to bring him up on stage and, then what happened? and concede his... He was fucking got arrested. Wait, I don't... So but why did he get arrested? He got arrested, arrested during know? the pre-show or during, like... When did he get yeah. arrested? Yeah, he got arrested during the pre-show. But does anybody know like why? Like, the pre-show was over. He did he, he he did everything. Like, he took his pictures. He did his press and everything backstage. And at some point between the pre-show and the main show, he got arrested. Oh. And, oh, and the so crazy part is, this, not even, this was a citizen's arrest. This wasn't even police who arrested him. He got detained by a fucking security. What? I didn't even know they could do that to you, the, the security of the building. Rap fell off, yo. This is actually the most rapper guy. shit ever. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You win three Grammys and they get arrested moments later? By a civilian, yeah, though? By not, a civilian? Not by a civilian, son. Yeah. Mr. Rapper, Look, kill him. Mr. Mean a battery for a security guard altercation. I didn't know they could do that to you. I, I mean, I guess it makes sense, though, because they're I out didn't of, either. Well, they're out in the arena. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they no, should have Sweden, yo. <laughs> it, it didn't happen to you at an arena, though, right? No, no, no. But it was just a security guard, and I didn't know that <laughs> they could oh, take Oh, security guard put you in handcuffs. Yeah. You deserved oh. it, though. You ain't even win no Grammys, bro. <laughs> I ain't mad at that. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what, what else we got? <laughs> he kind of deserved it, didn't he? You was, was being a bit of you an asshole. Being, no, you were being a 28 fucking days, asshole. bro. You deserved I deserve 30. That. <laughs> nah, you, 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 really, ah, you really did deserve that. Bro. You deserve thirty. Yo, have yo. some respect for another country. Like if that country is racist, just let them be racist. Bro. Yeah, you want to fucking some take respect a stand. For their culture, you, you know, know what I mean? <laughs> How dare you try to walk around like an equal? Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, they don't give a fuck about you, you in Sweden. Yeah, it's not America. Al Sharpton ain't going over there for you. Yeah, this is Sweden, <laughs> a racist <laughs> nation. Take your fuck. They have hell. racist rules. Okay. I should have called Trump, man. You should have. Trump, Trump wouldn't give a fuck. Trump said that nigga was doing what? Keep him over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He was drinking with whites. <laughs> How dare he? Oh yeah, let's do this. Let's play. Let me hear this. What's plies up to? Let me hear this plies clip. Fucking go. This was interesting. Favorite rapper whose music I don't listen to. <laughs> okay. Real quick, y'all okay. let me figure out something. When has America ever feared an old white man running this country? When? <laughs> For the life of me, I thought at some point that's that's the only person y'all wanted to run the country. Now y'all want me to believe, oh, he's eighty. Oh, look, his memory is slipping. Oh, he misspeaking. Oh, he uh, saying the wrong word. Oh, he's forgetful. Listen, I believe a lot of things, but y'all can't make me believe that's what y'all scared of and that's what y'all fear. Now, that may be the subtext you use in his age, but that's not what you fear and what you scared of. What you fear and scared of is, because that's all y'all saying. 
Oh, you know if something happens to him, you know if he gets reelected and he can't do the next four years. Oh, you know if he dies. So you're not scared and fearful of his age, but what you is scared and fearful of is his successor. A person who's more qualified politically than the last person who just left office. So I'm fine if you say, oh, as a president, he don't fulfill your needs. I'm cool with that. Like, I keep telling you, I ain't telling you who to vote for. But miss me with this whole notion of, oh, he's, oh, he's old, he's losing it. Miss McConnell, 81 years old, and missed and died twice on national <laughs> TV. Right in front of <laughs> I, ain't nobody told Miss McConnell to go home yet. Stay in there till you die, Mitch. <laughs> but y'all want me to believe, nah, that, oh, he's too old, he fell off a bicycle. I want to be able to ride a bicycle at <laughs> 80 years old. That man still standing in front of that teleprompter reading all them big words way across the room. I want to be able to do that at 80. He reading it better than me. So I know he reading it better than 95% of the people online. Until he can't read that teleprompter or see it. Then talk to me about something. That got to mean he confident to me. Or any political person. It ain't just him. I ain't never been to say nobody too old if they still can read that teleprompter from way across the room and still can see it. Yeah, thoughts? Uh, I mean, is he paid or... <laughs> what? Is like the administration paying him? Like, what's the deal? It feels tiring doing that voice he does. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, like, what's up with all that high-pitched stuff? I mean, the teeth are great. He's got great teeth. I mean, it, 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 uh, the thing is, like, here's the thing I would say. But think. the point is horrible. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a horrible point. Yeah, but it's a lot more nuance to it. Number one, the number one thing I would say to him is he brought up Mitch McConnell and the fact that Mitch McConnell We're died. Also afraid of him. Yeah, but here's yeah, my thing. Like, Mitch McConnell died twice on TV. Good point. Everybody has complained about exactly, him being too yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. Nikki Haley, who's a Republican, was one of the first people who was like, "Yo, they need to have term limits on people that are you know in in Congress." Yeah, like, because because. Of people like Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. And who else? It was Diane Feinstein. Uh, who else was it? Who else, Chris? Yeah, she was. Nancy uh, Pelosi, Pelosi, Diane Feinstein, Feinstein was, was the worst. melted. Yeah. She, she died, right? She did, but she was out of commission for probably a year or two while yeah. they still kind of propped her. Yeah, so Mitch McConnell, Diane Feinstein, you know, they, they have been vocally talking about how those two are too old. Yeah, so people so, don't so, want them, yeah. Yeah, the, the, number, the number two point I would say is. Well, which one I want to go? The number two point I would say is in regards to Kamala, that is true, but they're saying that out loud. It's not a yeah. As Plyve's doing it's once not again, she's black. It's because she sucks. Well, no, I think it's, she I, has a she has I, you know, some accountability no, no, no. here. I think I think it is. That's why I agree. I think it is the fact that she's a woman and the fact that she's a woman of color. And the reason I say that is because there is no policy that Kamala Harris would get in the White House and do that every other Democrat hasn't done. It wouldn't be no different than an Obama. Wouldn't be no different than a Biden. Like so, for, for for people to say things like Nikki Haley has also said this, but people to say things like, "Hey, you should be terrified of a Kamala Harris presidency." Like terrified? Mm -hmm. Like she's a cop. It, so Joe Biden's the author of the ninety four crime bill. Donald Trump let a coup in his country. Nobody says they're terrified yeah. of these people. Like that's a strong word to say. You should be terrified of a Kamala Harris presidency. Yeah. Terrified? I, mean, I don't think Kamala has done enough to gain the support of the American people. Like, she just doesn't seem competent enough when she speaks on things. And then she hasn't been inspiring at all since she's been in office. That's not our fault. I don't think fault. she's been inspiring. I think she's very competent, but she's not inspiring. I, I agree with that. She's competent. But th that's not our fault. That's her fault. It's her job to inspire us, to I want agree. her to lead us. It's not our job to, like, make some justification or, oh, we don't like her because... No, 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 no. You have the seat. Make me believe in you. I agree. Like she, she, she. You, you got to inspire people. She's she's more than competent. The job interview. You want yeah. the job? Convince me. Yeah. We're I, the boss. I, yeah. I, she's more than competent, but I agree with you. She's not inspiring. And the thing about Biden that Plies brought up. Here's the thing. There is a real concern about his age, y'all. <laughs> like, yeah. Like there's a real concern about whether he is mentally fit and even physically fit at 80 plus years and old to be the president. Fault. That's his fault for demonstrating 
a limited That's amount right. of cognitive ability at times when he's speaking. Because when people talk about Trump and they say, oh, Trump's four years younger than Biden. Sure. But, but he acts way sharp. more youthful. He's sharp. You know, even if he does forget shit and everything, it just That's acts... It. Here's the thing about being somebody like Trump. When you don't give a fuck... It's amazing. And, and, it? and you say whatever you want... Even when you do fuck up and say wild shit. It's funny. It just sounds wild. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like Trump trumping. When Biden does it, it's like, ah, uh, he's losing it. Uh, also, Biden, you don't want... Biden, be honest with yourself. You don't want to do this shit no more, bro. You want to go to Delaware, hang out on the beach, eat fucking vanilla ice cream with rainbow sprinkles. Yeah. You don't want to be president anymore. It's a ridiculous endeavor for a man your age. You have yeah. a limited amount of time left on this planet. Do you really want to spend it with half of the country fucking hating you? The other half of the country saying, yeah, you're too old, but it's the only thing that we got. No, what are you fucking doing? You've dedicated your life to politics. Go out to the pasture. Enjoy whatever time you have left. It's yeah. just absurd. I will say about Plaza's point, I do think that if, and I've, I've said this before, if President Biden had a different running mate. Yeah. If it was, it, it could be Gavin Newsom. It could be Shapiro from fucking People would vote for him because they assume. Absolutely. Yeah. So but, there is something to that. Kamala is not inspiring enough for us to trust it. It's just simple as that. She could have been inspiring. There's but, a guy named Barack Obama who was pretty goddamn inspiring, also happened to be half black. So it's not being half black is the issue. It's not being a woman. It's just her lack of inspiration. She wasn't she so far, maybe she still has it in her, but up to this point, she's not been good enough. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you. I do think she has it in her, but it's just a matter of do you want to turn it on? Do you turn a in, in, in a moment like this, right? In a moment like this, Schultz, where they're telling us that democracy is at stake, right? Like in a moment like this, do you turn off the traditional politician shit mm. and turn on that inspiring thing mm. that we feel? that I feel like she has. I mean, you know? if she wants it, she's got to do it now. You got to do it now, because it's not just about this year. It's about the rest. It's about the rest of your political of careers. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I think Biden wants to stay in office, so he still has political power to help shield his son, because that stuff oh, doesn't look good. Of course. And I think that's the only reason why he's... That's a great point. What, what the, that, man, Hunter, Hunter should be running. Yo, yeah, I, Hunter is the hero America needs. <laughs> tell him, Chris. <laughs> Chris, tell, tell him. He's the goat. He's a rock star. Yeah. He is a red. That's a super. Cocaine? Star. That's a super. Hookers? Star. Doesn't give a fuck. Don't give a fuck? I like it. Come on. He sounds like, sound like the best like the Democrats got to offer right mm -hmm. now. They Democrats need, need to shake some shit up. Yes, they need to be cleaning Hunter up and saying, this is our guy. You know what I'm saying? Yo, the, when he went to that hearing, man, that hearing that was for him, and he went there and made Walked all out. of those Republicans lose their shit. Walked out. And when he was leaving and the guy kept asking him over and over what kind of crack he smokes, hmm. and he didn't rattle him, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? This guy might be the man for the job. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Biden, man. Biden 2024. Come the on. other Biden. Come on, man. That's fire. Come on. Now you um, need to step up. Step into daddy's shoes. Come on, man. Hunter would have what it takes to go up against Trump in a debate. Because yeah. Hunter is a wild boy. Go look at Hunter's laptop oh, yeah. and look at the shit Hunter was saying to people. <laughs> Hunter was using the N-word. Hunter's a wild boy. <laughs> the political star y'all want is right, right there. there. Okay? Think about where Crown America up. is right now. We're such an unserious country. Yes. No, you know what I'm saying? We don't give a fuck about, you know, whether Crown or not you man, really got yo. experience and credibility and all that. Are you entertaining? Or not. Can you win? Mm. What wins now is a, a is culture. Pop culture. Crack smoking. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Son of a gun. Ooh. He got guns. Speeding. This Ooh. guy is... I you don't get, obey the law. Don't give a, you think Trump don't give a fuck about the law? Hunter don't give a fuck about the law. Biden, if President Biden should be leaning into Hunter, bro. Bro, he would be shaking in his What's motherfucking his boots, Trump. What's his slogan? He just said it. What? What would you say to hooker poking? Crack smoking, hooker poking. <laughs> Crack smoking, hooker poking. Son of an old rusty gun. No. Mm. You know, yeah, we need one be, more thing. We need one more thing. Crack greater. smoking, hooker, hooker poking. poking. Uh, what else did he oh, do? Oh, crack smoking, hooker poking, blog fire stoking. What? Too long? <laughs> what is blog fire? I don't know. I was just like, you know, stoking the flames of. But what about his merch? What the fuck? Huh? Hunt. He's got to work Ukraine in there or something. Weird. Oh, yeah, Stealing yeah. some money for he, Ukraine. Didn't he also have sex with his wife, his yeah, dead well, brother's yeah, wife? Yeah, yeah. Damn. Come on, come on, come on. He had sex with his dead brother's wife? Yeah. Yeah. Come on.
Son, son being a good brother. Yo, you crazy. Yo. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> what you mean? I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Being a good brother. I'm out. You Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I'm out. I'm being going. A good brother. I'm going to my 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 wife who just gave birth. Let's her do birthday some and, uh, I gotta go. I gotta go. That's all right. Love you guys. Bye. My guy. Bye. Bye. Let's do some asking idiots, y'all. I'm serious about the Hunter Biden thing, though. And I do really believe that Kamala can still inspire people. She just has to turn it on. I think Kamala has the charisma. I think she has the competency. Here's what I would like to see. I would like to see Kamala Harris challenging all of these people who have something to say about Joe in conservative media. I would like to see her challenging all of these people who have something to say in, con in conservative right-wing media about her and the administration. I think Kamala should be going on Fox News. Mm. Back in the day, President Obama would go on O'Reilly Factor. Oh, really? Yes. I don't know. Yeah, President Obama would go on O'Reilly Factor. <laughs> Fucking John Stewart, salute to John Stewart, he's back. John Stewart would literally go on O'Reilly Factor. I mean, he's not a politician, but he was still somebody who was left leaning, but he would go on there and challenge them. Kamala would run circles around them. Mm. Go on Fox News. Yeah. Like, go there. Go, go talk directly to that audience because now they can't misconstrue anything that you say. Like, if you're, if you're Kamala Harris right now and you say something in the news, Fox News takes that sound bite, they put it on, the right-wing outlets take that sound bite, and they flip it and bounce it the way they want to flip it and bounce it. If you Kamala Harris, you know what I'm saying, you go on there, talk directly to them and that audience, and maybe, just maybe, that audience starts to be like, she's not bad. Hmm. And that, that goes back to the... I, I think everyone's strongest moment for her was in the debate when yes. she was aggressive with Biden. With Biden. So she needs to showcase that part of her personality, right? Like mm. the, And go back and watch the Pence debate. The Pence one she did. Did she too? too? Yeah. I don't remember and, that. And much. go back and watch her when she used to be in the Senate and how she used to be spinning the fuck out of those those people in the Senate. Like she used to be so, prosecuting the shit out of those so folks. So then why is she holding back? That's, That's my, my point. I think they're forcing her to because they don't want her to outshine Biden. Because right now, everyone's already asking, why is Biden running? And so if she looks competent and she like, looks like she's capable of doing a job, the people are going to be like, yo, you should just run. If anybody in the Biden administration thinks that, they're idiots. And I'm going to tell you why they're idiots. They're I, idiots. I think they're, they're, the person is Biden. Yeah, well, Biden's an idiot. And the reason Biden's an idiot, if he thinks that, is because Vice President Kamala Harris, if she does that, she instills confidence in people to say, you know what? I'm going to go out there and vote for President Biden because if something does happen to President mm. Biden, at least we know that we got a great runner-up, somebody who point. actually needs to be president anyway. That's a good point. So why yeah. are you holding back? Like, take your gun off safety, let them motherfucking shots ring out right now. Now is the time, if democracy is truly on the brink in November. Because, you know, I, I feel like Biden needs all the help he can get. They should be running, running the Biden-Harris ticket. But more importantly, she needs to be on these conservative outlets. Go on Fox News. Go on Hannity. You know why Gavin Newsom is, 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 is becoming the apple of the Democratic Party's eye? Mm. Because he... Went on Fox. He goes on Fox. He did a whole debate on Fox against Ron DeSantis mm -hmm. with Sean Hannity moderating. He goes on Fox and he talks to them. So there's a whole different side of America starting to pay attention and be like, he's not bad. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not a bad, he's not a bad guy. So I, she should be doing the same thing, if you ask me. So Pl Plies wasn't wrong. I don't want y'all to think that I, I that I believe Plies is wrong. I just believe that a lot of the things he said are. These aren't, they're not even quiet parts. Like, when he did this about Kamala, ain't nobody doing this. They're literally saying that we should be terrified mm -hmm. of a Kamala Harris presidency. Yeah. And Nikki, Nikki Haley's exact quote was, there's going to be, we can, we can insert this too, there's going to be a female president. It's either going to be me or Kamala Harris, and we should be terrified of a Kamala Harris presidency. Mm -hmm. So they're saying that out loud. As far as Mitch McConnell and them, people are always calling for them to step down. Nikki Haley, once again, has done that done that too and as far as biden there is a legitimate concern about his age and his mental competency mm -hmm. i think all of those things can can be true yeah so it's not just as cut and dry as ain't nobody concerned about his mental health ain't nobody concerned about the fact that he's old they're just worried about kamala eh, it's a little yeah, bit i feel like john stewart just broke it down perfectly this uh he did. On monday he did i agree with john stewart on one thing though wait disagree or agree i disagree with him on one thing uh, what he said that regardless of who gets in the White House, the country will continue. Yeah. Yes, that's... Well, how do you disagree with that? 
<laughs> you should read Project 25. Why wouldn't it continue? What do you mean by, what do you mean though, by continue? Democracy as we know it won't continue. Oh. I agree with that. Democracy as we know it will not continue. Okay, that's still too vague. What do you mean? I, I, Meaning I, if Trump gets reelected, he now knows that he can essentially get away with anything. Anything. And he'll create a scenario or a situation where, I mean, you don't have to imagine what it looks like. You look at other countries that are in constant state of turmoil. Somebody gets in power. They say the judiciary isn't doing that. The Senate isn't doing that. I have to declare martial law. I have to declare a state of emergency. I have to take over power for X amount of time. And then once you cross that line, you can't pull it back in. Hmm. And that's what he'll do. He'll try it, and he'll probably get away with it because he's already tried it, and he got away with it. A million times. Yeah, he didn't even go to jail, for real. You know, like, hmm. I was thinking just the other day, man, like, think about how many cops are on the wall, on the mall in Washington, D.C., since 9-11. How much security is there? How much of a presence there is? These guys marched right in there. Mm -hmm. It's think over. About, I think about that all the time, it's man. It's over. There was an attempted coup in this country on January 6th. Right. <laughs> And nobody gives a fuck. Like, like, like we act like. And he let it. Yes. <laughs> like we act like that's some normal shit that happened in America, and people have the nerve to say what he won't do. Like right. they call they call it what Trump derangement syndrome. Like we're making this shit up. Mm. Like even that shit he said about NATO to me the other day should have been front page news everywhere, Chris. Right. Right. Like he literally said, "I'm gonna let Russia have at it. Fuck with fuck it. World War Three. We can get it popping." Go ahead, do your thing. And everybody's just like, okay, business with John Stewart's on the Daily Show. Like, it's like right. so Usher was at the Super Bowl. Like, it was just nothing. Wow. So, you know, I, you know, y'all can take the dictator for a day comments as a joke, and y'all can look at the coup like it was just a bunch of white people wilding at spring break in Daytona, but <laughs> it is, you know, you're going you gonna to get what you asked for. I mean, you think, though, people are just living too much in the moment, though? Like, they're not looking into the future. How you no, no, absolutely. They don't give a fuck. They really just don't give a fuck. Like, as long as, long, as, long as they got this, they'll stay in their right. virtual reality forever. That's now they I'm got saying, them fucking like, glasses and not... shit. They don't give a fuck. They don't even you, don't even... you don't even know what an America like that would look like simply because you just don't think it could ever happen in America. Mm. Right. Over the last... Since 2016, I've seen, like, 10 things that I never thought I would see in America happen. Easy. <laughs> it's like if I, if I had to like, I just saw the Bob Marley movie, right? The Bob Marley movie, um, One Love. Fant I, I thought it was a fantastic. I thought film. it was really good too. I was skeptical coming in. I mean, I'm biased, but like, it stood up. I thought it was good. Yep. I thought it was great. I thought the dude, uh, what's his name? We just had him on Breakfast Club. Kingsley. Kingsley. Yeah. Yeah. I think I thought Kingsley did a fantastic job. But one of the most interesting things about the movie to me is when Bob Marley got uh, cancer in his toe. Yeah. And he saw it. He knew it was there, but he just chose not to really do anything about it, right? right? And right. everybody was telling him, like, you need to go to the doctor, you need to go to the doctor, you need to go to the doctor. He didn't want to go. Then at one point, he was like, yo, you want to amputate your, amputate your toe? He was like, no, nah, he didn't want to go, right? So basically, then eventually the cancer spreads, and it kills you, right? A lot of times, and I'm, I'm just basing this off experience I've had with close friends who've had cancer, when they first get diagnosed with cancer, there's a panic. That panic causes you to act and do something. And you do something early so where the cancer doesn't spread. I feel like the cancer has already spread too much in America. And I feel like our immune system has motherfucking failed us. Mm. Because all of the things that are in place to stop the cancer from spreading, whether it's the Supreme Court, the Department of Justice, Things like the filibuster, all of these things that we have, right, that we should be implementing to stop these things from happening, nobody's used. Mm. So we've just watched it. We've literally watched this cancer spread and spread and spread and spread and spread. And now it might be too late. Right. Am I tripping, Chris? Stage two. Stage, you About, think stage two? Okay. Stage two. Okay. Still a chance. Okay. Still a chance with heavy treatment. Okay. But once it's stage three... How close are we to stage three, Chris? A <laughs> like, couple months. A co damn. 
Clock is ticking. The clock is motherfucking ticking. That's all I'm saying, yo. It's not going to be business as usual if Trump gets reelected. No. There's no scenario where that's what goes down. It might not happen the the next day. It won't happen January 11th. But as soon as he's in there, he's going to start trying and trying Chris says. Chris says that we have stage two. Stage two. I feel like the immune system of America is not functioning at all right now. I mean, Supreme Court, we've tried impeachments, like none of this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like all of these things that are in place to prevent the what, what seems like the inevitable from happening are not being utilized. You said it last week. So I don't know. Where you're like, he's not even president, he's making dictatorship. He's a overall. shadow president, absolutely. Right. So, huh? when, he's, he's a shadow president. Whenever you can yeah. post and tell Democrats not to move, I mean, tell Republicans right. not to move <laughs> on something, and they don't. The other thing you got to understand is, for the course of U.S. history, the second you left the presidency, the second you left the White House, you shut the fuck up, right? Like there was an unwritten rule: you never interfered in politics. You didn't, you know, you might endorse a candidate, but like you never uh, got involved in actual policy or trying to influence it because that's destabilizing. That destabilizes a country when there are people not in office trying to make those sort of decisions that they're not voted in to do. Mm. Trump threw that shit out the window Out now. the fucking window. Out the window. It's very dangerous. Out like, the there's window. a reason. Look at, what have you heard from Bush since he left? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Either Bush. Hardcore Republicans. Very much part of the Republican system. Shut up as soon as they're gone. I mean, you, you could argue probably Obama's been kind of like the most vocal... Out of all the experts. And that's only because the times call for it. Because the times call for it. Yeah. But, like, traditionally, you never heard from these guys again. They would never inject themselves into the conversation. Trump just ran all over that. And what scares me, man, and I love John Stewart. I was watching John Stewart on The Daily Show. Of course, he did a phenomenal job. He's John Stewart. He can't miss. I just felt like there is a certain level of pragmatism that's going to set in with people. And we're going to start. No, no, not start. We've already normalized this shit. But I think even right now in this moment when there should be like a real sense of urgency, there's not going to be. There's going to be a lot of people who just intellectually start kind of just accepting defeat. You're going to start hearing like, it's going to be okay. Like right. that's why even when he said, uh, you know, no matter who, regardless of who wins, the country will go on. It's like, let's not put these two things in the same bucket. Right. You know what I mean? These two things are not in the same bucket. But I'm watch. I'm starting to see that from a lot of people because nobody wants to look crazy. Nobody mm. wants to look like uh, Rafiki in The Lion King. Right. Like nobody wants to look like the crazy person that's screaming, "The sky is falling. It's gonna be the end of the world." And Republicans have done a great job of labeling people with this shit called Trump derangement syndrome. Mm-hmm. So whenever you're basically just out here stating what we all see, it's, it's right there. We're not making this shit up, no. Chris. It's right there. We're downplaying it, if anything. We're d- very much so. Very much so. But when, 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 you, when you talk like that, they just you you they make you look crazy because mm-hmm. they've convinced everybody this motherfucker's crazy. Listen to what he's saying. This shit could never happen. It's happening. It's not, it's, not, it's not even about could it happen. It's happening right in front of all our eyes. Just look at this guy's track record. He burns things down. He hypes them up, and then he destroys... I was in the YouTube comments reading... I guess I said something about Trump on another show, all these people. Chris hates Trump. Chris is an idiot. Trump loves America. He loves... He doesn't love Americans. Mm-mm. You don't sell fucking Americans bottled water for $10 if you love them. You don't fucking sell them cheap steaks. You don't fucking sell them bad timeshares. He's a fucking hustler. He doesn't give a fuck about anybody but Trump. Do you think that now, all of a sudden, this guy who's tried to get over on every single American he's ever encountered is suddenly, uh, you know, this mag- this big-hearted guy now that he's president? No, he's a fucking hustler. How about you don't love America if you tell America they should suspend the Constitution to overturn the results of an election? Right. You don't love America if your lawyers are in a courtroom saying that, you know, he never agreed to support the Constitution. Right. Like, come on, man. What are we doing, y'all? Come on. It's all right. He so, said talk a good game. It's okay. You got the guy wrong. That's all. So from what I'm hearing, it seems like voting for Trump is a really bad thing. But how come I'm also seeing, you know, certain people that are 
in politics or around politics when asked, are you um, supporting Biden? They're not like so forthcoming to just say outright. Nobody wants to support Biden. Like nobody wants to support Biden. People but you're, you're, it seems like it's either a vote for the end of democracy or maybe somebody who's Listen, I'm not seen te- I've, I've told you already, I'm not telling anybody who to vote for. All I'm going to simply do is tell you what I see and you make your own decisions. Mm. You make your own choices. If you want to vote for Biden, do your thing. If you want to vote for Trump, do your thing. If you want to vote third party, do your thing. If you want to sit home, do your thing. I've been telling people for the last year, there's going to be three choices in 2024, three legitimate choices. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be the Republicans who are the criminals, the Democrats who are the cowards because they don't fight for nothing, and the couch, which is voter apathy. And the couch is probably going to win. Now, I don't know who who the couch benefits. Trump. Maybe. I think I, maybe there might be there might be enough energy around, you know, there might be enough women who say, fuck that Roe v. Wade got taken away. I want to go out there and, and vote, you know, to keep this guy out of office. I don't know. I really don't know. But that's the scary thing about November. Mm. You don't fucking know, because based off what we're seeing from Trump, it should really be a blowout, y'all. <laughs> you know, it should be, but it's not. It looks like it's going to be a close game, and that's why everybody is upset, and that's why everybody is telling Biden he might need to step down. Because here's my here's the, here's the scenario I see in my head: if it's close, Chris, Republicans are going to steal it. Oh, that's yeah. what they do. It's got to be a blowout. That's got to be a blowout, and it's and, not going to be a blowout. It's not going to be a blowout. The Democrats' only defense for voter suppression every single time is we have to have the largest voter turnout in the history of the of America. We have to have the largest voter turnout. I don't think they get that this year. I don't see people, you know, between Palestine and Israel, between, you know, uh, voter apathy, like just people just being discouraged, Biden not inspiring people. I don't think that people run out there in droves to vote like they have in previous elections. Mm-hmm. So, so if it's not a blowout, and it's close, Republicans are going to steal it. Mm. They've done it a million times. You got to give them a 5 to 10% steal margin, right? Damn. And Plus, if that's, that swings it right there. Our generation, they don't I mean, think they tried January 6th and weren't successful. You say what? They tried to steal in it. I mean, this well, past was an unsophisticated coup. It's sloppy. Yeah, that's all. It's an unsophisticated coup. It's not, it's the, the next person, the next, the next person's probably going to get it right. I think Ari Melville or somebody said it a, a long time ago. That was practice. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if Trump gets back in the White House, they don't have to, they don't have to do That's shit like that. That's how crazy this guy is, that he was just off the cuff like, yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's give it a fucking shot. Let's see what shot. happens. Let's see if these guys march down there and if they can't stir some shit up. Mm. Worth a shot. Just threw out 200 years of democracy with that. Hey, man. All I'm telling you, in 2024, you do your thing. I, you know, I, I'm not. I'm not telling you who, who who to vote for. I'm just telling you everything that I see. And I hate that people act like you can't critique, you know, the Biden administration or Democrats, and still not know what your best interests are in regards to who to vote for. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's just weird to me that we act like we can't critique both parties. Like why can't we put both things on the table and know exactly why we're voting? I know I'm voting in 2024. Mm. I'm voting. I'm voting to save democracy. That's it. All right. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's it. Simple as that. Oh, I do have one more idea, Chris. What's that? What if Nikki Haley ran as a Democrat? In what capacity? Like if they bumped Biden and put Nikki Haley and put Nikki Haley running as a Democrat, and it's a combination ticket of Nikki Haley and a Shapiro, or even Nikki Haley and a Kamala, or Nikki Haley and a a, a, a Gavin Newsom. I don't know. I mean, I'm no fan. I'd still take her ten times out of ten over Trump if that's what it takes. I don't know. Maybe a combination, a combination (laughs) ticket. Would she do that? I don't know, man. I'm just throwing shit out there. I'm, I'm, listen, it's clear I'm at my wits' end, right? <laughs> it's clear we. I'm out of bright ideas. It's clear that you know, it just might be. We might just have to accept the inevitable, Chris. I, 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 it's sad. It maybe maybe this is what. So, maybe this is what this is how America's supposed to go. This so the re- scary. The, I know. The, 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 the reason I'm literally sitting here right now is because 
my ancestors a generation ago looked at the landscape and we were like, it's time to get the fuck out of here, right? So if you really feel that way, because there are a lot of people from that side of the family, they're gone. They didn't make it because they stuck around and they thought they could wait it out or they didn't have the means to leave or can't, it won't be that bad. They're dead, right? So the question always is, if this is the way I see it, this is the way you see it, do you stick around? Or are you the one who gets on the boat and goes to wherever the next place well, is? Well, here's the thing. I have to get the fuck out of here because I don't have a job. Journalist, journalism is a wrap. Yeah. Like, it's over. That's one of the first things that fascists and dictators do. There's right. not going to be nobody out here that's going to be able to speak truth to power in any way, shape, or form. Freedom of speech for who? Get the fuck out. By the way, he's already said it. Yet another thing. Let me see if I can find the quote that his people said about uh, journalists. Hold on. Hold on. Because y'all ain't be, y'all really not paying attention, man. Hold on. Yeah. I remember I was talking to a woman when I was working on the book with uh, Ivanka Trump. Mm-hmm. Right. So just remember, when I talk about Trump, I know who I'm talking about. Yes. She was pulled off a plane because somebody made a comment about his hair, and she laughed, and they pulled her off the plane. Oh, my God. This is a guy with a very thin skin. Very thin orange skin. Very <laughs> thin, <laughs> brittle. Okay, this was all You're of You're not laughing at him. This was December. This was the first week in December of last year. <laughs> I'm just going to read three headlines. CNN.com. Trump and his allies are threatening retribution against, their pre against the press. Their menacing, menacing words should not be ignored. CNBC. New Trump, new Trump administration will come after the media, ally, ally, ally warns. New Trump administration would try to prosecute journalists, former Trump advisor says. I don't have a job. Trump calls for jailing journalists. <laughs> who broke Supreme Court's draft abortion decision. Anything that you say he doesn't like, you're going under the fucking jail, Alex. Okay, and it's going to be more for 28 days. <laughs> all right? <laughs> it just is what it is. The fact that we're all just sitting around acting like all this shit is normal is actually kind of insane to me. When, like, it's, it's actually kind of like, what the fuck is going on? It, it's almost to the point where like, if, if you are a manipulative, evil person... You would just be like, you know what? These motherfuckers really are stupid. Why don't I just take advantage of them until this shit is over? Mm. That, you don't ever be feeling like that, Chris? Yeah, and honestly, if he hadn't done January 6th, I could talk myself into being like, all right, he was president once before. It wasn't great. We survived. It kept moving. But once he tried that, I was like, oh. Chris, he tried that. I was like, oh. He tried that with, with, with no indictments. Right. No criminal charges. He tried that with no indictments and no criminal charges. What does he try with all those indictments and criminal charges? What's the Maya Angelou quote when someone shows you who they are? Believe them. He's showing you who he is. <sighs> Whatever the fuck ever, man. You know what the problem is, though? What? People want um, money, so I feel like people are also still holding on to Trump giving money. Well, that's a very well, short I'm just, I mean, this is just things I'm hearing. That's all. Not even true. I don't know who planted the idea that somehow people were getting paid, you know. It's the feeling. It's the feeling people had during his administration. Because you got to think, there was stimulus checks and PPP loans. It, it felt like everybody was balling. Right. Nobody gives a fuck about civics and Congress and all that shit like that. Donald Trump was the president. He took credit for it. People got PPP loans. People got stimulus checks. We said, what's the quote? Uh, people will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did. But they'll never forget how you made them feel. People felt like they were bawling under, un, under a Trump administration. It's well, really just that simple. Gonna, people think it's going to happen again. We're not about to be in another pandemic. So Why they not? think that... Why wouldn't we be in another pandemic? I don't think they're going to shut the... You think they're going to shut the city down like that again? It's not like he put the pandemic team in place. What was the pandemic team <laughs> that he got rid of that Obama had put in place because Obama saw some shit like this happening, so they had a whole pandemic team in place that Trump came in and got the fuck rid of, and then we got hit with COVID? You think we can't get hit with another sh another pandemic? Absolutely, goddamn lutely And be in the same situation? Absolutely, motherfucking lutely 100%. But it ain't going to be Trump that'll get y'all out. It's going to be rocket money. 
Rocket Money is a personal <laughs> finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and helps save this members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash idiots. That's rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Let's get back to the show. Oh, no! I got to salute DoorDash. Thank you, DoorDash, for sponsoring the Brilliant Idiots podcast this week, man. You want more from delivery? You can get it with Dash Pass by DoorDash. Dash Pass is the most affordable way to get anything in your area delivered to your door, helping you save money and time with every DoorDash order with $0 delivery fees and lower service fees on eligible orders. Dash Pass makes it easy to save on restaurants, groceries, retail items, and all your local favorites that deliver on DoorDash. Dash Pass pays for itself in two orders on average, making delivery even more worth it. Plus, Dash Pass gives you special access to exclusive promotions and member-only menu items, all for only $9.99 a month. Get more from delivery for less. Sign up for Dash Pass today only on DoorDash. Use code IDIOTS24 and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. That's code IDIOTS24 for 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Subject to change, terms apply. Before we do Ask an Idiot, I want to tell y'all, man, salute to my guy, Glasses Malone. He was on Brilliant Idiots last week. Make sure you subscribe to Glasses Malone Podcast, the No Ceilings Podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. Salute to my guy, Looney. Okay, make sure you subscribe to the It's Up There Podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. And salute to uh, a new partner of ours, the good sister, Sarah Jake Roberts, man. Sarah Jake Roberts, one of the most powerful voices that we have in our community today. I love watching Sarah when she preaches at the Potter House on Sundays, but she has a fantastic podcast that so many of y'all are already subscribed to, the Woman Evolve podcast. You can now listen to the Woman Evolve podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. And... Thank you to everybody who subscribes to Carefully Reckless Podcast by my good sister, Jess Hilarious, the newest member of The Breakfast Club, our official third co-host. I love to see the love that Jess is getting. She is having a fantastic year. She just announced that she's pregnant with her second child. And, you know, to what we was talking about earlier, man, Jess is absolutely an example of a woman who is choosing to have it all. You know, she's got, she's already got a child. She's having another child. She's got a great career. You know, she's already had a great stand-up career, a, 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 a very rising acting career. Like, you know, she was on rail sitcom the first season she was the co-star of that she's been in a lot of movies you know but she's still out here you know doing her acting thing she's got you know her radio career about to take off with you know um you know the breakfast club and she's got a successful podcast the carefully reckless podcast on the black effect iHeartRadio radio podcast network so make sure you subscribe to my good sister just hilarious's podcast now asking idiots taylor what we got aaron underscore 0783 mm. I'll come back to that one. Devell Pinson says, if you had access to a time machine, would you want that? Would you want one that goes forward or backwards? Backwards, probably. Nah. We had fun in the 90s, you said. Yeah, but I want to go see, I want to see how this shit gonna play out. I would want <laughs> I, I, if, if I had to go get a peek, I want to go get a peek in the future. Yeah. I want to go get a peek in the future. And I, I would want to see how this shit play out. And I would need time. Meaning. I don't want to just go in the future. I need at least a week to see what's up with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, like let me go see what the fuck's cracking with people. Like, you know? And would I have to wear a disguise? Would I have to dress like the Ninja Turtles with the trench coat and the hat and shit? Would I look out of place because of what everybody's wearing? But I would want to go see. I would want to go see what How things... How far in the future? I wouldn't even go that far. I'd go to 2044. You want to go farther than that, Chris? <laughs> no, I, go, I, go, I go past. Really? Because I can pick. Yeah. I know the era I'm going back to, so I can pick one that I'm excited about, that I've always been curious about. The future is a, is a dice roll. You could fast forward into a fucking Holocaust or something. You don't know. Well, you get the fuck out of there. <laughs> you yeah, but now saying? you can only go forward. Or you talk to one person. Or you talk to one person. How did this shit start? <laughs> you go back, you kill a goddamn baby. 
Whoever started the shit, you go back <laughs> and you get rid of the motherfucking That's true. Baby. You're more service <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you go forward yeah, and come back. Yeah, yeah. Because you can save people from themselves. But you know what's so crazy? You can also make a lot of money betting. <laughs> you, you know what's so crazy? You go into the future, you find That's out what's happening, bet. and you think we sound like goddamn madmen now. You come back and try to tell people about the <laughs> shit you saw in the year 3000 or even in just two, 20, 2044. We probably sound in fucking sane. <laughs> Do you know how crazy it probably sounded when somebody told people in the future you're going to be phone. able to, like, <laughs> talk into these devices and call people anywhere in take the world, pictures. take pictures? They're gonna, th there's going to be a time where everybody's just going to be looking down, glued to these devices. All of this shit that we're experiencing now that feels normal to us, at one point in our society would have sounded crazy <laughs> trying to describe Chris. I remember still to this day when they added cameras to the phone. And my, and my sister saying, that's so stupid. Like, why would they just add a camera? I'm happy carrying my camera around. I remember that to the day. I, I, I remember, li I was listening <laughs> to Bishop T.D. Jakes this weekend, and Bishop T.D. Jakes was talking about when he was a kid and how TV used to cut off. He oh, said yeah. it was three channels, and my TV would cut off at a, like 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock. Yeah, I think it was one. And then you yeah. would kind of be asleep, and they'd be... They would just throw a flag blowing in the wind, and there was music Something that played like that. with it. Think about that. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Think about that. That's he, so crazy. And Bishop what did radio like, do? Radio stayed on. Oh, okay. And Bishop T.J. is only like 60-something years old. So think about how much the world has changed. I, I was born in 1978. Do we know how much the world has changed since the 80s and the 90s? Come on, man. And I would have said, fast paced. if I'd have been there in the 80s and 90s, I would have sounded crazy. Yo, I remember sitting around, with shit like Behold the Pale Horse used to seem like this will never happen. Right. Mind blowing. Now it doesn't even. It, it's normal as fuck. Right. So much stuff from Behold the Pale Horse has actually happened. Like, it's unbelievable. I remember, salute to my, my first white friend, Thomas. Thomas Evans, my first white friend ever. We used to live right next door to each other. That's my guy. I remember Thomas. Talking to me about, I was, maybe it was Nostradamus. I mean, this was the '80s, mind you. Maybe it was Nostradamus. It was something. It was something he saw that he read about the future, and he was like, "World War Three is going to be America, Russia, and China." What? I remember this. This was, in, it was and mind you, in the '80s, it was a, it was already a little rocky thing with in Russia. Russia, you know sure. what I mean? Yeah. But I remember him saying in World War III, he said, not, it was, I don't know, maybe it was not. It was somebody he read. He was saying, in World War III is going to be Russia, China, and, 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 and America. And I'm like, really? But think about that. We're in 2024. This was the 80s. He read something that some, somebody, from the, somebody predicted that was going to happen in the future. Now look where we are, Chris. That's all I'm saying, yo. I remember the first mass shooting. You remember the first one? Yep. Was that Columbine? That was, no, no, no. 1985. Kids, no, 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 no. I mean, way before kids, that. The, those teenagers. No, right? way before that. It was at McDonald's in San Diego. I wouldn't go into McDonald's for like five years. I was petrified to go into That McDonald's. was the first mass shooting in America? Yep. 1985? Maybe 87. Look it up, but I think it was right around that era. I never even thought about that. Yeah. There was nothing like that before. America, so, them shit is so common in America. Now that now. my kids, it's the most... Normal shit. Yeah. They get evacuated from school twice, two, three, four times a year, you know, for that. Jesus Christ. We had fire drills. Yeah, now they got mass shooting. Now they have mass shooting drills. Aaron underscore O. Uh, what did they say? Just tell us to hear. We don't got to look it up. But with what, though? Because I think it said, like, in a The school story of the first mass shooting in U.S. history, Howard. It wasn't a school. It was a McDonald's. That's what I remember. Walk of death. That's what I'm saying. Like, so. On Labor Day. It, it says 1949, Chris. Oh, really? Yeah. So he decided to go to the movies in Camden, New Jersey. Boy, Camden has been shooting up shit for a long time, huh? How many yeah, people Of course it's in Philadelphia. Uh, it don't say. I can't read it. I have to read the article. Uh, well, first one I remember. Either way, they still haven't learned how to fix the goddamn problem. Right. Uh, let's go back to Asking Idiots Taylor. What do we got? Aaron underscore 0783 says, do you think Club Shay Shay's formula is sustainable? Ooh. Why not? Why wouldn't it be? I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be like any other platform. It's like, you know, when you have a, 
Well, for, he's, he's going to, he's got, here's the thing that I keep telling y'all, or maybe I haven't told y'all, the most impressive thing about Club Shay Shay is Shannon Sharp. You, Shannon Sharp right now is a personality that people should be studying. And the reason they should be studying him is because he is a multimedia personality. And you have to be, no, let me, refer, not multimedia, multi-platform personality. Mm. He is multimedia because he's got a podcast and he's on television and stuff like that. But he's a multi-platform personality. He comes on first take and he does his sports thing, right? So he's down there with Stephen A. Smith and everybody else. They're talking sports. So you're getting him in that aspect. Then when he does Club Shay Shay, Club Shay Shay is really about the artist, right? So he's on there talking to the comedians, the rappers, the singers, the actresses, actors, whoever it is. So that's one aspect. Then at night, he's giving you his personality with him and Ocho Cinco, with Nightcap. He is a multi-platform personality, and that is why he's having the success that he's having. You have to be multi-platform. I do Breakfast Club in the morning. I do Brilliant Idiots. I'm, these are two things that I've been doing. Breakfast Club for 14 years, Brilliant Idiots for 10 years. When the opportunity arises and I do television, I go do some television. You have to be multi-platform. I write books, you know what I mean? I don't know if you want to consider books a platform, but that sure. it is, you know? I do audio scripted, like, even though I just executive produce those things, but my point is you have to be multi-platform in 2024. There's so many people fighting over, you know, this small market share because they have one platform. Mm. You know what I mean? Radio is a platform for me. Podcast is a platform for me. Social media, YouTube, television, those are all platforms. You have to be multi-platform. Shannon Sharp is multi-platform. So do I think his formula is sustainable? Yes. Why? Because he's sustainable. So, you know, it's just going to be like anything else. He's going to always have a platform that people are going to fuck with. And you're going to have... You, you, you only get a Cat Williams once, bro. But I think the question he's implying, like, you know how people are kind of just going there... To talk to, to air what that shit he out. Do, what, is, what are they doing? Everybody they has done grievances. Every yes. There's no, no shortage no. of people of grievances. What What uh, are they doing on Club Shay Shay that they, do, they don't do everywhere? No, nah, I feel like for some reason, like, after Cat, now it's like that is the purpose of a Club Shay Shay interview. It's like you that's get on true. there to air your shit out. That's not true. That's I mean, not true. That's what not do you think true. Club Every, that's how it feels. That's like, not true. It just feels that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's You're only saying that because it's all the, your whole algorithm. That's because people are stupid. It's only been two people who've done that. Cat Williams and Monique. Country Wayne went on there, did it a little bit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Not, but not Mike to the, Epps is talking about it. Now. Yeah, but not to the level of Cat Williams and Monique. He's had Usher on there since then. Usher didn't air nobody out. He had 21 Savage on there since then. He ain't air nobody out. We are really stupid. I, I Don't get it, Trump. Do your fucking thing, no. man. Take this shit over, man. Like, because we're, we're just... Like, the things that we come up with in our mind, and I don't even know why we do this. I mean, that's what the question. I'm reading the question. Well, to answer the question... Even Kyle Sinat does it, too. Does what? No, he doesn't. He doesn't do anything. Kai don't do that. His, his content is all positive. Yeah, Kai don't do that. I think people people are shooting at Kai, and now that Kai is responding back, people acting like Kai shooting at people. Kai not shooting yeah. at nobody. Kai is just basically saying, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Why y'all hating on me? Leave me the fuck alone. I was actually very surprised that he even did that, because he usually doesn't even entertain that shit. I would tell him rise above it. I yeah. would tell Kai, keep dancing, man. Keep dancing. Keep reviewing your music. To me, all of that stuff is a distraction. Even with Shannon Sharp. I would tell Shannon Sharp the same thing. Shannon, don't listen to none of these distractions. There's a lot of distractions out there now mm. because that's just the way we are. I don't know why we are wired like this, but we love to see something grow and then get to a certain level, and then we just start shooting at it. It is weird to me. Mind you, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Mm. If you don't like a show, cool. If you don't like a personality, cool. Do your thing. But it is just so weird how we just build things up and then long for those things to be torn down. Like, the fact that Aaron0783 is even asking me this question, do I think Club Shay Shay's formula is sustainable? Why not? Like, I, I, why wouldn't it be? What formula is he using that hasn't been used forever? People think <laughs> it's popular now, so it has to die eventually. Well, I hope, I wish Shay Shay much success. I wish all of these platforms, you know, that have, um, all of these platforms that are being built, I wish them all longevity. I love the fact Drink Champs is coming up on 10 years. I love the fact The Reed is up on uh, 10 years. I love the fact Breakfast Club been around for 14 fucking years. Like, why would we 
Why would we want otherwise? Gillian Wilder been around for like seven, eight years. I want all of these platforms to be around for long periods of time. I think Shannon might have been doing it for like, this might be year two, maybe? I'm not Yeah, but I mean, that's encouraging to me because I think if you're in the business, if this is a climate where it feels like it's impossible to launch something new or to create that yeah. sort of momentum, right? If it, it feels like, oh my God, like how do you get something to pop? If you like it, don't like it, it's undeniable. Yeah. The guy took something and accelerated it and elevated it so it can be done. Mm -hmm. You've just got to find the right format. So just for that alone, I'm like, all right. Yeah. Good. Like I said, the only thing, the, you're, you're only as sustainable as your host. And I think Shannon Sharp is a very sustainable host because he's multi-platform. He is not limited to one thing at all. And I think that's the way you have to be. Like, you got to play in all of these different worlds if it's natural to you and it seems very natural to him so salute to shannon sharp and club shay shay uh genesee how do you get ready mentally to quit a full-time job to focus on your business you got to just do it you got to treat it like the cold plunge okay don't tiptoe in it all right don't ease your way in it you just got to jump in do it it's going to be cold for a little while but your body will adjust all right? And if you believe in yourself, it won't be hard. And the fact that you're even asking that question lets me know that mentally you're probably ready to quit. You're ready to quit your full-time job and focus on your business just because, you know, you're asking that question. But, you know, you can get ready mentally all you want, but there's a lot of other things you got to deal with. Financially is the first thing. Do you have enough money to sustain while you focusing on getting your, you know, business off the ground? Or maybe your business is already doing well enough to where you're saying, you know what, I can quit my job right now. But I would tell you exactly what I just said about Shannon Sharp. I wouldn't quit my job. Nope. Why? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's 168 hours in a week. If you have a full-time job that is helping you deal with your reality, that's going to make it easier to focus on your business. And if you're one of those people who tell me, well, I don't have time, I will tell you like I told you in my first book, there's 168 hours in a week. Write down all the hours you're spending doing things. Okay, if you're 40 hours at a full-time job, you still got... 128 hours left to play with. What are you doing with that 128 hours? I guarantee you within that 128 hours, you can spend another 40 focusing on your business. Even with that, you're still at how many hours? 80. 80. No, more than 88? I'm terrible at math. Mm. Hold on. Around 88. Let's see. But you still need to sleep. 168 hours minus 80. 88. 88. You got, still got 88 hours left to do what the fuck you want to do. If you don't think 88 hours is long, get sentenced to 88 hours in jail. <laughs> get sentenced to 88 hours in jail, okay? You got more than enough time to do everything you want to do. I wouldn't quit my full-time job unless I absolutely positively hated it. But, you know, that's just an extra check. And in this era right now, you got to be doing more than one thing. Yeah. You really, really do. So the same way I'm telling Shannon Sharp and saluting him for being multi-platform... You got to be multi-job, <laughs> sadly. Do like Alex. Yeah. I remember Alex I remember coming from the court, yeah. parking on the street with the video, <laughs> with the video equipment bag, in the yeah. trunk, until it got to the point where it was like, all right, this is clearly the right move to make. Yeah. But I was like, I, I remember that you were doing both. I've been doing both for 20 years. I mean, this is the climate. Like, yep. you can do both, and you need to. What do you say to people that... Um, always want to change their job because they may not feel like respected in theirs. It's you. Like I have. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's them? Really? It's you. Why? You if it. everywhere you go you feel disrespected, it's you. Everybody can't be disrespecting you. Yo. That's just impossible. Like, like no. I have a friend that she works you got in it to the. Man respect, yo. She works in the. Not, I want to say healthcare, but uh, I forgot. The title of it originally, but what does respect even look like at jobs? She just feels like they're kind of send, they can be condescending, and she'll switch. Like I think that's <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm not saying that they aren't being condescending. I just think that any time, especially in this era, if you're an employee of a place and you're listening to all of these people tell you that you got to be your own boss, right? You want to be Dame Dash. Right? So you listen to all these people tell you that you want to be your own boss and you got to be your own entrepreneur. Anytime if you're listening to that and you're working these jobs, you're going to always feel well, like somebody's being condescending to you. You're going to always feel like somebody's talking down to you. Yeah. I, it's just, you I was going to say, because she works in, you know, mostly all white. And 
Yeah, but she goes to the, it's the same position. She'll get another job in the same, same um, what do you call it? Same category of the job. Field. Field. Thank you. <laughs> same field, but that's it. That, I, I'm, I, I don't. I can't speak to her situation totally, but it sounds like it's really on her. I'm not even joking. Like, I, I, it sounds like to me like she's not feeling respected just because in her mind, she's looking at all these white people. She's telling herself Dr. Umar would hate me. You know what I mean? She's telling herself Dame Dash would want me to fucking be my own boss, and it's fucking with her. Like that's 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 I don't that's, that's I don't know I don't know. Let's do let's do one more, man. What what we got? Let's scroll up, Taylor. Uh, I like this one. No. Play twenty six says where? Let me see. When are we gonna see both of you in a movie? When we do the brilliant idiots movie mm -hmm. out our own pocket, which which will happen one day. Oh, this is a good question. Oh, this is a good question. Well, everybody asking about Schultz's daughter. Oh, I'll do this since it's Valentine's Day. Julie165 says, what is the one thing you love about your wife? I have a million things that I love about my wife. A million, a million, a million things. But I love my wife because she is who she is and has always been that. You know, we've been together since we was kids, since teenagers. The person she is, the stoic, sure, showing up for her friends, showing up for her family, very trustworthy, very loyal, honest person. She's been that. Mm. So she's really, so as I say the one thing, she is a person of great character. I don't know if there's too many people that I've ever met in my life who have the level of great character that she has. And she's just, man, she never like wavers in any way, shape or form. Like I've never seen her too happy. I've never seen her too sad. I've never seen her too excited. I've never seen her too down. She's just very stoic. She balances you out. At all times. Definitely. Because I'm the crazy motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and have been the crazy motherfucker. Like, she's the perfect balance for me. And, um, yeah, that's the, that's, that is, that's the one thing. She's a person of great, I'm talking about pristine character. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 she's, nev she's never bullshit. Like, I, like, she's never, ever bullshitted. Ever. She don't bullshit nobody in her life. And that's something I've seen from the time we was kids to, you know, growing up in our 20s, 30s, now 40s, to having our own kids. And uh, there's nobody else on this planet that I would that I would want to do life with. And I thank God for blessing me with that beautiful black woman he blessed me with at such an early motherfucking age. And I wish I would have done right by her and got myself together way sooner than I did. But everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. So, you know, I got about 50 more years. We got about 50 more years. Do y'all have those talks? What you mean? Like, what? why are you shaking your head at me? What talks? <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? Because I'm just saying, like, seeing, like, my grandma getting old and everything else, I wonder if she had oh, those 100%. talks. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. Like, you got to speak when, it into existence. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm I, I'm going to be here till 101. I'm just saying, like, when it comes to both, like, I don't even want to give you anxiety. Never mind. That's not anxiety. We're going to die one saying, day. I'm just saying, like, it's just, like, what have you died for? Like, I, I don't even I have no problem. I, I know I'm going to get to live a long life. I already know I'm living till about 101. You got to talk about those things. Though. I know. Absolutely. You got kids. Absolutely. There has to be plans. Yeah. and Absolutely. I had that talk with my father the other day. Yeah. And it's the right talk to have. You Absolutely. Know? He's like, this is my drawer. This is where this account is. If That's I right. die first, go do this, go do that. Your mother will need this. Your mother need that. Here's the paper if you can't find this. Yeah, I recently had a discussion do with my mom. I think my parents are iffy with the, the, the conversation. Listen, man, we got our will, we got our trust, everything, and that is the key word, trust, too. That's the other thing I love about my wife. She's the only person on this planet I've ever truly trusted because I have very severe trust issues, which I didn't even realize I had until recently, but it connects the dots on so many things, my anxiety and all types of other stuff. I have very severe trust issues. She's the only person I have ever trusted wholeheartedly ever in my life, like, like, Period. Being married to someone you don't trust would be... I can't even imagine a week of it. Yeah. Right? 
Like the people who are stuck in relationships where they don't trust, man, Excuse who they're married to. I like, would gargle with bullets. You know, <laughs> it'd be a nightmare. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm getting the fuck out of here. Are you wait, crazy? Wait, though. Jesus but sometimes Christ. it doesn't have to do with you. You just say you just recognized it, though. Recognize what? That you have severe trust issues. Yeah, but I've always trusted her. Right. Okay. I've always trusted her. So in that realization of how I have severe trust issues, I realized she's the only person I've ever truly trusted. And that's that's powerful. That's powerful, yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. Like I, I don't know what we was doing we was doing Brittany this last week and now somebody asked what's more important, love or trust? And maybe that's a drink champs question. I don't fucking know what it is. I just feel like you can't have you can't have love without trust. Yeah. You're trusting somebody with your heart. You know what I'm saying? Like you're trusting somebody with your your being. Like women literally have their their your your heart and your balls in their hand, and they can crush either one of them at either time. I feel like trust swallow either one of them at either time. <laughs> I think it's levels of trust though, because people can say they love you. But do you trust them to be in a room with Usher? Like you know what I mean? Like where does that go? That's not that's my point. That's not trust. If I can't, I, 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 can, if, I, I can trust my wife to be in a room with anybody. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I feel. Yeah. You know? And guess what? Here's the other thing about trust, right? Even if you trust your significant other to be in a room with a person, even, let's, just say, let's just say they do make a mistake. Do you trust that person to be exactly. honest with you yeah. about the mistake they made? Mm. And do you love them enough and trust yourself enough, and trust trust yourself enough to know I can stay in this relationship, and not keep bringing this shit up, and I trust that person enough to not make that same mistake again. Yeah. That's all. I don't even know what I said just now, but that was fire. That Record was, that. that I, might, I might put that in a book or something. Right. Um, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.